many I need you guys to count it down with me. Five, four, three, two, one. Leading out your tournament leader, former Bass Station National Champion, three-time classic qualifier from Wisconsin, Pat Schlopper. Right behind him, his second season on the Bassmaster Elite Series, five top tens last year, an Elite Series victory, your day one leader, Kyoya Vegeta. He's an Elite Series rookie, but look out, he's made his mark. The lowest he's been standing in this tournament is third place in his first Elite Series event, Robert G. A four-time Bassmaster winner from Summerville, Carolina, Patrick Walters. Welcome him back to the Bassmaster Elite Series. That didn't take long. The back-to-back -back Bassmaster Classic champion from Coleman, Alabama, Jordan Lee. The first Canadian ever to win a Bassmaster Elite Series event from Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, Chris Johnson. An Elite Series champion and a four-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier from Colgate, Oklahoma, Luke Palmer. Elite Series champion and the youngest angler ever to win an FLW Tour event, Stetson Blaylock. His very first Elite Series event and already inside the top 10 from Alabama. Get loud for Logan Parks. He's a two-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier, also from Alabama, Justin Hamner. Been in top 10 last year, but kicking off the season right, looking to make another top 10 here this week from Connecticut, Alex Weatherell. The youngest angler ever to qualify for the Bassmaster Elite Series took a second place finish here last year in the Opens. Get loud for 18-year-old Trey McKinney. Right behind him, a two-time FLW Tour winner, a five-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier. From Shelby, North Carolina, Team Toyota's Matt Airy. Took a win here last year in the Bassmaster Opens. He's an Elite Series rookie, but no rookie. He is Ben Milliken. A two-time Bassmaster winner, one in the Opens and one in the Elite Series, Brian New. A four-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier. A Bassmaster Open winner from Mount Carmel, Tennessee, David Mullins. A four-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier from Newcomerstown, Ohio, Hunter Shryock. Another one of our amazing rookie class. Took a Bassmaster Open win last year. Going to fish his first Classic in just a few weeks. Already making his mark on the Elite Series, Kyle Patrick. Don't call it a comeback. One for one in 2024, John Sokup. He's a Bassmaster Open winner, a five-time Classic qualifier, and a four-time Canadian Open champion. Rolling down the power pole, a wrap, a Ranger Mercury, Corey Johnston. Also an elite a Bassmaster Open winner, a Classic qualifier, and another one of our amazing rookies. From Maine, Tyler Williams, the reigning and defending Bassmaster Classic champion from Kenora, Ontario, Canada, the great Canadian snow leopard, Gussie Jeff Gustafson. Oh, and the rookies keep on rolling. Keep your eye on him, Wesley Gore. A two-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier, the only Australian ever to win a Bassmaster Elite Series event from Toowoomba, Australia. Fear my heart, Carl Jacobson. Five-time Bassmaster Classic, the qualifier, the baby shark, Shane LeHue. That sends out the first 25 votes. We will have a pause here for 15 minutes. The next group goes out at 7.15. Next group of votes goes out at 7.15 here this morning, so everybody have a sip of coffee, chill out, and enjoy this beautiful morning here in Manny, Louisiana.
the end of the season. It's actually the 50th year for this uh, gentleman sitting next to me, which is the Gamagatsu Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend, and this is Live Mix, and Live Mix is our uh, angler show. Uh, it's also a show that uh, we, we get a little bit more analysis and a little bit more from 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 well obviously from the anglers and it's been it's already been an interesting tournament oh yeah toledo Bend is a fascinating lake you know my first tournament on it was in like 1969 uh the squirrel could go from this side to the other side and trees there's nobody can imagine if you didn't see it back then how much trees are under the water out there yeah. and most of them are petrified uh and that's bad if you hit one of those. But the lake does get low at times, you know, 10 or 12 foot, and it's, it's allowed the, those t trees to rot and mostly break off. So uh, fortunately, right now with a full lake, uh, your, your chances that they're still good, you won't hit one, uh, even if you get out of the boat lanes, but uh, it's still possible. Right. Well, one of the things, and we've, we've talked a lot about this lake, and. And, and a lot of things over the years, but what a lot of people don't, don't realize is that uh, this is when he talks about that 1969 tournament. That was your first tournament. It was a bass club tournament. Yeah, it was my first one. I had a, a, a runabout boat with no troll motor <laughs> <laughs> blowing around in the wind. Of course, back then, I mean, you were really, you could be out of the wind in the forest out there, but. And, it, and and I've loved watching the evolution of the lake because I, six, seven, eight years after that, you know, I was I, I, about in 70, I think I won my first bass club tournament ever on this lake in Sandy Creek, Six Mile Creek. But uh, and then about that same time when those trees started rotting and uh, and you get a, a wind, a front hit, and you could be out in the middle of the lake and no waves. But the problem was they were getting rotting. And you, you know, when you, Time how you break used to, well, no, no, but you, you remember the, when you used to stack dominoes up, yeah. we would knock one down and, and you'd look and, and it'd go <laughs> just like dominoes oh uh, going God. across the lake. I mean, the water splashing 10, 20 feet in the air. And we learned when that happened that you get in these back in these little pine forests that were just being weren't very big and they were just their tops were sticking out and you, you got away from the big trees. Yeah, and then later on, you just the wind blow you in the tree, and it looks like these black poles. The top would break in about two or three pieces and come down like javelin. So it, it was an interesting fun time of time. <laughs> well, you know, and 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 that the fact that you started your first tournament, the first tournament right here, and, and we're on your 498th, your 50th season. Uh, so much time. It's almost a metaphor for how things have changed in the bass fishing world when you talk about what this lake looked like as opposed to now. And things are constantly evolving. Things are constantly changing. And, and we've got an incredible tournament this this week with, uh, you know, we've had a, a leader each day. First day was uh, Akoya Fijita, and today is Pat Slapper. And, and uh, you know, we assume that, it could be somebody new at the end of the day with this lake uh, potential. Absolutely. You saw what Patrick Walters did just take him from way back with 30 pounds. And we may have not seen the biggest string yet uh, here. Or I definitely have, may not have seen the biggest bass. So it's, it's just wide open, you know, right now. Guys can come a long ways in two big days in the end. Well, they're still, I think they're fixing to take off the second flight behind us. And, uh, and our boats have yet to get off, uh, get to... Basically, this, any way you look at it, this, this lake always seems to, and I, I thought it interesting you said in 1970 you won your first tournament at, in Six Mile because it always comes down to Six Mile, Indian Mounds, and housing. Mm -hmm. And it's not any different today. No. Uh, but, but that wasn't really always the case because there were, there were some northern bound places that produced winning stringers. Yeah, and the, that they didn't used to be the best. At twelve fifteen area above the bridge, uh, out in the middle of the lake, used to be the best, and uh, it was because it, it had grass just like Housen and Six Mile did for a long, long time, and eventually the grass disappeared up there, and it comes back in little places, but it's not there long enough to build the huge population that Housen and Six Mile have of those grass fish. 
So, yeah, it's, well, we've been saying that forever, you know, <laughs> you know, fishermen, leave the grass alone, leave the grass alone, because it's the whole key to, to the bass world. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like we're Robert G., and he just uh, might have had a bait, uh, bite there. But he's one of our rookies, uh, young rookie. and That's I mean, getting to be common. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually is. You know, there's there's a lot to that, and, and, and it's, you know, the guys that, that got started really early on the electronics part. And, uh, they seem to have have an advantage, especially when it comes to this. But, I mean, you know, the other part of that, Rick, and, and you know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but, I mean, I've, I've covered a lot of tournaments over here uh, without forward tracing someone. And... I look at the weights, they're different, but they're not that vastly different. You know, I mean, if you look at, at uh, you know, the time we were here when uh, Kevin won, I mean, big stringers caught on crankbaits. Uh, yeah, that was a you know. different time of the year, but he was still down in that area that yeah. you're talking about, Toro Bay and some of those areas. And uh, I had a 25 plus pound spring the first day. I didn't do any good much after that. That Kevin won. I was second. He was first, and I was cranking, deep cranking. Uh, and uh, so, no, you can do it here. Uh, you know, uh, if, I may, I'm sure Keith Combs did a little bit, a bit of that. You know, he, he loves. He knows the lake. He loves to crank. And so, but still, it can't compete consistently like. Uh, it, 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 you, see, when our fish move, when you were cranking, when you weren't sure where they went to, right. and nowadays that's the one huge advantage of the forward fishing. You immediately go in the area where you're at, and you see if they're still there, if they move, and then you can follow them. And uh, but um, it's um, you watch these guys though. The one that intrigues me about this technique is, and this is what people don't really see when we're watching this. I liken it, you get this beam going out in front of you, and that beam, you're searching for the fish. But not only do you have to see the fish, you've got to see which way it's going. You've got to throw it in front of him. You've got to get, get, get it down to it. It's got, it reminds me, you shoot a shotgun, don't you? Yeah. You know, when you're bird, it reminds me of when you're bird hunting. You've, oh, got, yeah. to, you've got to lead the bird, okay? Right. You've got to lead, do the same thing with this. So you've got to understand exactly what the fish is headed, what direction right. he's headed. Then you've got to lead him. The, the big difference in this what even makes this harder than shooting a bird is uh, the fish is going to make the final decision if he's going to play. Right. <laughs> well, right. the bird doesn't always make the final decision. Right. Well, that, that's that's interesting I mean, because I, I have heard, and we're looking at Koya now, you know, that he's so efficient at being able to look down at that machine and know where that fish is and just like uh, I think Dave, uh, Mercer talked about it yesterday. It says, you know, see, uh, Dave, uh, you see Greg ha Hackney going down the, the bank or Denny Breyer going bound up, and they see a, a nickel size hole, and they, you know, they don't, they don't do a lot of, of it's just instinct and and just practice of pump, and and they hit that right. with a jig, and this is the way that Koya, he is so efficient with getting his bait in the right place quickly. By the time the average guy, and especially an old guy like us, we see that and start, to, okay, well, that's 20 yards or 60 yards, or, and then he's going to be 10 feet deep, and I'm going to have to make it this guy. He's already there and caught the fish. Yeah, you know? yeah, he's, and it's, again, it's very similar to its accuracy. Right. And he's developed the accuracy uh, with that equipment and with his rod, he still that's, that's still the final step. It's, it's using your, the same old rod and really you've been using for most of your life, and, but you got to be so super accurate with it. Right. I don't know who that is. Oh, that's Patrick. Is that Patrick? I think that's Patrick. He doesn't have enough rods on the deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. He's cold. And the other morning he said, okay, this side is my shallow water rods and this side is my deep water rods. And then yesterday he said, I'm probably not going to unstrap a single shallow water rod today. <laughs> <laughs> so but still, he may have taken off some of his shallow water rods. That's funny. 
I am, you know, and and it, the the forward facing, of course, Patrick is one of those guys that's been really good with yeah. it. Yeah, uh, and it's been interesting to to watch this progression that, that takes place. Uh, but I do, I do, I get the other side. I do miss the the shallow. I, do, I, 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 I didn't miss it, but you see what the results were. I, I, love, I mean, yesterday I was having so much fun catching the fish, and, and I could get to where I could call the shot and tell. I and mean, that's what's fun. You know, okay, there's going to be one there. And then my partner said, man, you're having a great day. And I said, yeah, I'm having a great day until I weigh in. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I think a lot of jurors, and it's always going to be. Uh, I've seen a few, but that's Schaefer, isn't it? Oh, it is Schaefer. It is. I should have. Uh, they, they're built similarly. Yeah. And they got these black things on, but I should have remembered that Schaefer was a striker guy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's an interesting guy, you know. But the, the, the viewers, the, the the thing, a lot of the reasons I'm not liking this is because it's selfish. Uh, they. Uh, they selfishly can't see where the heck is he at. Where if I'm fishing the bank and the cove and boat dock, oh yeah, I know that boat dock and see where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> but the, out here, boy, even me, I'm going, where, where is he at? You know, and I, I can't tell you. I, uh, getting responses. Well, I mean, you know, and there, it does. I mean, there is. I mean, but if I, so, if we're watching you going down the bank or somebody else going back down the bank for that, and you're coming up on a boat dock, you're sitting there, you know, as a viewer, yeah. as a fan, you're like, okay, how is he going to do this? How is he going to approach this? Exactly. You know, uh, but with uh, there's so much that now that we should be able to see that we're not seeing. And, uh, yeah. Well, and the thing, everybody that likes it needs to be patient with all of the people that don't like it because most of us are going to be dead in 10 years anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and because my son loves it, uh, he loves it. It's a, a, he, he'll, he'll, he'll push me off the bow to get up there and do it. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new generation deal. And, uh, and the thing that's really positive to me about it, this is a week Saturday. There's going to be so, this is a, one of the best lakes in the country. There's going to be so many boats on the lake. And it's getting more and more of that true with all of our good lakes. And what it's done, what that's doing for us, is spreading this out. It's taking pressure off of a lot of some other areas. If, you, if all of us were on the bank, including all the locals, it'd be a zoo today. So this, that's one of the best benefits that I see, is spreading the anglers out. And, 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 so, and our fisheries are so pressured. Thank goodness they, they, the healthy fisheries like this hold up. But still, there's more and more boats out there. In the middle of the week, used to in the middle of the week, you wouldn't see the amount of boats I saw yesterday. Right. Well, one, that's one of the things too. Is that is, you know, Ricky Green was was my mentor for for many years, and and he would constantly remind me that, you know, we're only fishing for ten percent of the fish. That's brilliant, because I didn't. I know. I I would. That just hit me now of watching this new yeah, age. That there's an there's the biggest percentage of fish we never see. And we kinda started kinda uh getting into uh getting into seeing some of that more that bigger that percentage when we had uh, the Alabama rig. Mm -hmm. You know, or people catching them in the Alabama rig. Now we're seeing how many more are out there. Uh but uh, and I and it's all assumption because none of it, we don't know any of that. Yeah. There's Luke. He's fishing, but I hadn't, yeah. But some of these, uh, you know, some of them, they have been catching some of these big strings early. But I think the, uh, I think, uh, forgive me for not being a Koyak. I'm terrible with names. I like it when they. They, they always did me a favor and gave gave a little short American name that I could call yeah. them, like Nor Nor I mean Nor Nor Tanabe, and then uh, Takahiro Mori Tio Takahiro finally said, "Call me Tio." 
empty also. <laughs> empty also. <laughs> he made it easy on me. Yeah. There you go. Well, it's Koya, I think. And and every time I say that, I'm thinking I'm right, and then Sago or someone will, yeah. will give me the correct pronunciation. And I'm not missing it by much. No, no. You know, but it's like the difference to them is saying Rick oh, yeah, or, yeah. or Rick or Rick. Yeah, yeah they, they can't say R as well. So. All right. See, that's what he needed. That camera uh, doing a good job there. Or this bait. I can't see his bait. That's always my problem is seeing the bait. The ba so again, I think that is the bait. Oh, that is? No, it's oh. awful big, but no. I can see the fish yeah. either on yeah. the bottom. It looks like it's coming up. Is it? And, uh, I know that some of them are catching them on the bottom, not suspended like uh, a lot of them are. Yeah, there's his bait. It's not in the water yet. We're just sitting there thinking, assuming. That's Luke Palmer. You know what they need to get to the camera guys from cost bass more money. You know how I can switch that screen to the back screen so the guy at the back screen can see it. Uh -huh. You can see exactly what he's seeing and have it on both screens, and then he can shoot that back screen more and instead of trying to shoot through his butt there. Because uh, that back screen, that's really where you learn. It's right there's what he's doing to the right. right there. You can see. So yeah, that, that's the fish. There's the bait. I, the fish. I see yeah. the bait behind it. And, of course, there's such a talent to that. I mean, I only say it because I don't know a lot, but I fish with Cody Huff quite a bit. And uh, it's, he says, you let the bait fish see it. And you can't fish behind him, but you've got to fish in front of him. The minute he moves toward it, then slowly start to move it away, which is so act true with with, uh, with shallow water baits, spinner baits and stuff. Right. Speed will generate strikes a lot quicker right. quicker than than a lot of techniques. And so they try to do the same thing when they're, when they're, you know, fishing these fish like that. They try to take it away from them like it's getting away. But you don't want to do it too soon, you know. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to do it not, and you don't want it to get down there too late. So well, you, you spend a lot of time boats. with Cody, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, I see boats all throughout there, and they used to be spectators and, uh, but I think that's that's competitors as well. In some areas, I, I know several guys are fishing together. So, you know, you have this you have this deal where they're out there, and so you 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 spent time with Cody and and others, and I mean, you know, did uh, do you wish you were twenty years younger? Of course. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't want. I know. I mean, I, we I, wish that anyway. But well, I'm talking about for, for this for this technique. I wish I had 20 more years to learn it. I really do. Uh, but I don't want to give up my 50 years of the way I fished because it was it's been beautiful. There's there's an aesthetic quality. I agree with fishing shallow that I think I miss. I would miss out there, the above water aesthetics. Now, below water, you'd start to learn below water aesthetics. And I'm believing out that. The, this is no different than un your eyes above water and everything you take in and and, 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 and what nature gives you just for the outside of the fishing, uh, like that moon going down and all of that this morning. Uh, but I, there's an underwater aesthetics too. Understanding, that's just another way to understand nature, underwater. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, so I, yeah, I'd like to be able to, to you know, learn learn all that too. Well, yeah. maybe we'll we'll learn some of that today while we're here on on live mix. But we got to take a break, so uh, let our sponsors do a little bit of the talking, and then we'll be right back with uh, Rick Klein here on live mix. Stay with us. I joined the bass club in that same time frame that Toledo was being impounded and filled up, and. Uh, and my first bass club tournament was, was the Pasadena Bass Club just south of Houston. And our, my first tournament was on Toledo Bend. And of course, you can't imagine, I, I mean, the timber that was in that lake. Nobody came unless you saw it. I mean, you literally could not see the other shoreline. I mean, a squirrel could literally go from Texas to Louisiana and never touch the, the water or ground. I mean, obviously, he'd just from tree to tree to tree. It was it was amazing. I I, I had a 
hate to even admit this, but my first bass boat didn't have a tow motor. But, you know, that shows you what I knew about bass fishing uh, at that point. I'll never forget that because I know how much timber is under the water even now. Tacoma, Toyota, let's go places. We believe in bass fishing, but we believe in bass catching even more. We make products for hardcore anglers. We design, build, test, and redesign until it's right. We cut our teeth on 15-pound floral and 30-pound braid. We only admit the bleeding when we get bass thumped. We're here for serious anglers. We are serious anglers because those of us that earn this badge are untouchable. We are Bass Mafia. Buy more, save more with Lowrance. Are you ready to take your fishing to the next level? Get a huge rebate of up to $4,000 when you purchase selected gear from Lowrance and a whole range of leading marine brands. Scan the on-screen code or visit Lowrance.com to level up your boat today. It's the moment when everything is on the line and precision, power, and control make all the difference. A moment over 20 years in the making, anchored on loyalty, trust, and support that goes beyond all expectations. A relentless pursuit of perfection, all born from a revolutionary idea to help you rule the water. Power Pole. One look and you'll know. These fired up next gen machines are engineered like no other. Precision tuned to excel under pressure. Vexus boats have revolutionized what quality, performance, innovation, and a true rough water ride can be. Check out the long list of advantages at vexusboats.com. After all, some things turn your head, others ignite your soul. watch them every, every Sunday on ESPN. We've had our leaders trying to hang on for dear life. We've had some other anglers make a furious charge in some cases. You know, and to be able to fish the Elite Series, like, truly means everything to me because I've truly set my whole life up to do this. In the top 10 fishing championships of Sunday, it all comes down to this. And I feel like now I'm there fishing against the best in the world. Got your eye on a new Yamaha outboard? Then get to your dealer now for the power and performance sales event. For a limited time, purchase a new Yamaha 30 to 450 horsepower outboard and get up to seven years of Yamaha warranty protection free. Or earn up to $200 in dealer credit on eligible 2.5 to 25 horsepower models. With amazing offers like these, Yamaha power and performance has never been a better value.
When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches. Great taste. No compromises. Go rogue. Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend, sitting here with uh, one of the greatest legends, if not the greatest legend, uh, Rick Klein. Uh, really enjoying the conversation, Rick, but I also have to say that, you know, we've been talking a little bit about forward facing sonar and, and how it's a young man's game. Well, there, during the break, I had to put these on <laughs> so I could see the uh, bass track, and, and I'm thinking, man, I wonder, you know, they're going to move the next one they come out with will be a reader version of the right of the forward facing. But we've had a, have had a little bit of activity on on the water since since the break. Robert G has has, has caught two fish and uh, they're both in the two pound range. But he's taken over the lead from Lake Pat Seminole Slapper with that with the four pound total. Yeah, Patrick Walters has two fish that weigh two and a half pounds. I'm, I'm guessing that that's going to be more like five pounds because he is, <laughs> he is the biggest sandbagger in the world. Luke Palmer's caught a two and a half pounder and Stetson Blaylock has a two pounder. Trey McKinney has a two pounder and Matt Airy has a two pounder and there's a few more other catches scattered on around there. But the fish have started showing up. Uh, there's our current unofficial uh, leader there, Robert G. I guess with uh, yeah, you follow. We're going there and he's uh, thing, he's just a a rookie. He's a kid. Yeah, how many rookies are near rookies? I mean, there's so many of those are just guys that have, uh, have embraced the, the you know the. You well, know. you got Robert G. there, and then you got Trey McKinney in ninth, and then Ben Miller. Good to see Lowe Jordan Lowe Lee Lowe doing well. Logan Park, and third. Yeah, JoJo's back. I think we got some. Yeah, the heads on them. I mean, when they pop up, you're like, is that a, like a log? <laughs> the ones I call practice sport facing, we're back in creeks like that. And they were, you know, they weren't deep. I mean, they were, I would be in 15 foot of water and the fish would be sitting six, seven feet deep. And the few that I did make the accurate cast on, and they you know, they bit pretty quick. But uh, but they were further back in the creeks. I wasn't out in the main lake, and I didn't do it enough. I tried to do it some yesterday. I got a limit pretty quick yesterday, and I moved out in the wind. And I did. I didn't. And it's like Cody Huff. I talked to him this morning. He didn't see hardly any fish yesterday, and I, I I'm doing like he's doing. I'm moving around, and I didn't. I never really saw any like, for about an hour, and I. Of course, me, I'm like, heck, I'm going back to bank, <laughs> you know. Well, the, the, watching these guys and what they're doing, I mean, there was uh, an old fisherman who used So, you know, watching watching him, and, of course, we want to give these guys a center stage when they're, when they're talking and try to learn from them. But one thing that I've learned, just understanding a little bit more, I had a, an old guy who used to catch big, big stringers uh, on Washita, on the Gray, and those lakes. And I asked him one day, I said, what are you doing? It's different, you know. And he goes, you want to catch these kind of fish, you fish just like you've been fishing. But before you leave, every place you leave, you turn around and you throw that spinnerbait as far as you can out there and slow roll it back. And the first time I did that, I caught like a four-pounder. But, I mean, you know, because yeah. those fish are, are back there. Right. You know, we, we assume that they have to be on something, you know, that they have to be on a tree or they have to be a, under a rock or next to a rock or this and that. But, I mean, you know, you guys are talking about those fish being over 50 and 60 foot of water just floating up there in six, yep. you know, and uh, – that's crazy, you know. That's not that's not what we 
understood. Well, there was a few early, early anglers uh, that were tried to tell us that, Buck Perry and, you know, and, and spoon plugs and, uh, and learning the structure. And the gentleman that just made it into the Hall of Fame from Arkansas. You, you're one of Glenn your Andrews. Glenn Andrews. He did a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they tried to, but we just most of us are still too hard-headed. And, and it's embarrassing to me now, to, and what I realize, and like I said, that I was fishing for 10, even on my best days, I'm fishing for less than 10% of the fish. They all, the rest of them were, not, the other 90% were behind me. Right. He's just a special, special angler there. See where I live, he's like really, really close to carrying. Now, of course, we're talking about certain types of body of water. There are certain types of right. body of water for, yep. you know, that's this use of Sabine River example. Uh, right. you, most of the fish are going to be 10 foot or less there, always. It's just due to the nature of the... Of the well, there's not many <laughs> much water 10 foot or deep. No, uh -uh, but we fish lakes like that, too. Okeechobee, and even though Okeechobee was one <laughs> in the river, the, deep, the only deep part of there was just the Kissimmee River. Huh. Oh, like a food trough or something? They used it as a food trough, but then yeah. like... Uh, archaeologist from UT came and found it and was like, hey, do you know what this is? <laughs> and they were like, no. If you, yeah, it holds water. It's a good, it's a good uh, watering hole for my, for my cattle. And there was a freaking a Native American canoe. And they, now they have it in a museum in Tennessee. Holy I missed a lot of that. I uh, I missed that. But when I when he said archaeologist and then Native Americans, I'm like, come on, huh. give me some yeah. information. Yeah. So one of the you know there are you know river systems are typically one of those those places like you said the Spine River, etc. But uh, I still think that, that that it's kind of amazing that that we're we're unlocking some of the some of these keys, but at the same time. The frustrating part of it for uh, so many of us who don't, we hadn't grown up like that. See, and I, I'm assuming that's right. Yeah, it's Robert G's. There's uh, one there, fish in between. There it is. I got debate yeah. on him, too. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. might be a good one. You get, oh, will it say you lose him? Please be a good one. It might be a good one. Please don't be a good one. He got it hooked yeah, up. Yeah, I thought he thought it, and I thought it got it, but it no got course. near that tree real quick, and oh, I couldn't tell for sure. I hadn't, I hadn't seen that one of these little birds all week. No, that's a uh, drum, I guess. Or, I don't believe it's a carp, is it? It looks kind of carpish. That's something else. I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> See, that's that's the thing too, is that you know, but then the other part of this is just real quick, okay? Because I, I can't stand watch this some thing. of this during the course think, of the, I always think the I'm last couple of days, one. and then it's a freaking drum. <laughs> it's a drum. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thought that these guys were in, on you know, at the mouth of housing. That that they're yeah. out of the mouth of housing, right? That is and then. Creepy. He's going back into a creek. I don't know what creek that is, but I mean that's that's not that's back in something. Drum, drum was crazy. You know. A lot of them be, being caught that way. There was shallow water. I was fishing yesterday. There was two of our guys. They made it. To, both yeah, of them I made the top. They're out in, in back in a creek like this, out in, in like the water that's twenty to fifteen feet deep in max depths. Right. But they're but you see here's the thing too. They're fishing it the same way you would have fished it in the old days. They're following the creek channel. They're, they're not right. just, there's, yeah, they do catch fish wandering around, but they're still fishing, on, looking for the same kind of migration route, the same kind of habitat that we've always looked for. They're, they're just fishing it out further and then fishing it in a different way. But those they have, those folks were doing exactly more what he was doing. And I was, I was watching them because I could see the creek channel on my deal, and they were just they were just winding down and following the creek channel. And and, and they both made the, you know, the top uh, 40, so. Or 50. Let's go check this creek. Man. I don't know. I don't see it. Haven't made it in a while, so I forgot. Yesterday they were over here thick, but I guess they moved. 
Brandon's back here again. I guess he jacked him back here yesterday. He, get, he just gave us some anglers that are back there, but I'm I'm just like more interested in I mean, you know from 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 what you were just saying because I remember you know typically back in the day and depending on the level of that uh -oh. uh, you know the depth of the water you'd be following that creek channel to one of them oh yeah crank deep, deep, deep crank no that depth there and you could have definitely been uh, uh you know throwing that deep crank bait and that's what you know that's why we were taught that's why we learned almost all my fish if I had to pick, you could say I can only fish one piece of structure and nothing else. It would be creek channels. Sure. And river channels. Good. Yeah. I just quit fishing them when they got too deep. And these, 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 these guys are still fishing them even when they're too deep for me. Uh, Pat Slapper has caught two keepers. He's got Back two down. that are going to come in at six. And that's including almost a five-pounder, four, 412. Goya still without a fish. Patrick Walker says caught another one. He's it's got an another one. Just another pound they're pound. all in one pound <laughs> range, you know. Yeah, three that weigh four, four. Unless he's catching 14 inch spots, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Chris Johnson's caught a five pounder. He had a big fish yesterday. He had a good thing, yeah. yeah. Them boys can fish. Yeah. They proved it from the time they arrived. Mm -hmm. And when I say boys, Chris and Corey both. Mm -hmm. So I think it's ironic, you know, uh, we're sitting here in the home of uh, Bo Dowden. And, uh, you know, I'm actually staying in one of Bo's condos. I'm going to go up here to Patrick Walker's and see what he's got on. But, and, you know, Bo Dowden was, was a big part of the bass fishing scene in the in the 80s and 90s. And, and uh, I can That's remember great. him being at a, a press conference that. in he the early 90s. And somebody that asked him questions. Life. I'm not answering that. <laughs> I spent my whole <laughs> life learning that. And we started answering your questions. And, yeah. and we're teaching these kids That's quickly. And, and we had to learn all this stuff for no, it's so true. I mean, so. we did. Uh, we were guessing it so much back then, but nowadays I have these young anglers come up to me, and, and they weren't even born when I'd won the tournament, and they tell me exactly how I won it, but from social media. and yeah. So the the information they have, that, and they do do their homework, is so good now. Back then, you, you didn't know if a guy was telling you the truth or not. Half the time he wasn't. Yeah, most time he wasn't. Fishermen do occasionally lie, Rick. Yep, yep. This camera took that away, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they still try sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> they know it didn't. Yeah, they still try sometimes. But, you know, even this morning, uh, we got a text from Harold Allen. You've mentioned him. Oh, oh, wow. uh, uh, on, he's guided on this lake his whole life, and yeah. he just even said, I can't believe the strings are catching. And he guided on this lake his whole life. Really? Yeah. The legend. Yeah. So, so it's uh, you know when Corey, I mean uh, not Corey, Cody Huff won the very first nast big national tournament. It was another big circuit, won on this lake about four years ago. The guides watched where he fished and said, "We know where he's fishing, but we never fished that far out." Wow. And he kind of he kind of opened the Pandora's wow. box when he did that. Yeah. Mm. And now, it's, I'm not. Saying he was the first one that ever did it, but he's the first one on a national stage that right. brought brought it to the fishing public attention. Hey, well, you know, that's what this game is all about, and and some of these guys forget that. I mean, uh, we we play we. Last night I watched uh, a baseball game, and and baseball has always been about pitching. It's always been about hitting, you know, and it's it's a. Uh, pitting your favorite team against your enemy right fishing is is we say well it's all between me and the fish and this and that but the reality of it is is uh, people love seeing patrick walters win uh, that kind of thing but they're not 
watching this competition to uh, hope for the worst on some somebody and make sure that only their hero wins like you would in a baseball football basketball uh, they're watching this to learn they're watching this and they have their heroes because their heroes are teaching them how to take this knowledge and go out on the water next week with their family right and you know and so they can figure out how to catch them because everybody wants to catch one well, and this is a unique sport, and I said it back in the mid, late 70s after I won two classics. This this very unique. You mentioned all of baseball and football. This is the one sport that has so many levels that you can participate at that it doesn't relegate you to being an armchair quarterback after a short amount of time. Now, Tom Brady and a few of these guys are elongating <laughs> their times in the sports, but still it's relatively short life, and then you got to get in the armchair and in your sofa and watch it on TV. You don't have to do that in this part. I made the statement back then. I don't care if you're 6 or 60, there's a level you, you can enjoy in fishing. Right. And we were sitting here emphasizing tournaments, but there's so many more levels that you can enjoy. It. And I was, that's one of my proudest things, winning that in 2016. I kind of proved my statement true. I'm Here I am. I was then, even my 68 or 69, when I won the 2016. And I so I, I'm gonna have to elongate it from six to maybe eighty, <laughs> so <laughs> that you can you can enjoy this sport. It's, it's a, that's what's great about it is that you can really, really, and there's so many levels that that you you can enjoy. You don't have to go out there and you know fish like we do crazy right. all the time. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go away for a minute for another break, and and when we come back, I'm gonna. Uh, Rick will be sit, still sitting here, but I'm going to sit Jason Christie down here for a minute and, and let Jason and, and uh, Rick have a, have a moment. So stay with us for some more exciting times on Live Mix. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology, allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real-time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern. is contagious with bass. Playing off a fish's instincts, the Hydro Wave incorporates recorded sound vibrations that a fish would naturally hear or feel, provoking them to act. Look at that. Look, look, look. Pre-programmed with sounds and settings that let you fine-tune what the fish hears. Gosh, what I bite. Whether you're matching the hatch. Look at that thing. Presenting something new or just trying to dial up the excitement when you're bound to school. The Hydro Wave provokes for extra bites. It's time to buy, save fish now until March 31st. Skeeter is offering rebates of up to 5000 on 2023 and 24 models or your choice of Yamaha factory financing. With rates as low as 4.99% or 5.99% with zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for 90 days for qualified buyers. With buy, save fish, there's never been a better time to get into a new Skeeter boat. But this fantastic offer won't last long, so stop into your local Skeeter Boats dealer today before this deal gets away. Way. Skeeter Boats. Eat, sleep, fish. Out here, it takes a certain type. The type who's always the first one out. The type who knows deep down everyone else is just fishing for second. Enter the Apex Series. See more fish. Seize more victories. Settle for nothing less. With unrivaled clarity, it's the top fish finder for the most demanding type of angler. Only from Hummingbird. It's definitely a lot colder today. Man, I really need to make this cut. I need to make up points quick. Positive mental attitude. 
I hope they stay where I found them. Are they even pulling water? Too far. And I hope nobody else. Man, that's there. too windy. Too the water's too high. Avco, keeping you comfortable on the outside, no matter how you're feeling on the inside. Have you considered purchasing new electronics for your rig? The type of mounts you choose to protect your investment should be part of the decision-making process. No matter if you prefer one, two, or three graph mounts up front, Beatdown Outdoors has a solution for you. Adjustable, versatile, rigid, and made in the USA. What's your ultimate electronic setup? Check out the full selection of Beatdown Outdoors products. And remember, you can't beat a beatdown. When there's miles of water in front of you and hundreds of feet below, you need a boat with the chops to dominate, no matter the conditions. With the strength and technology to overcome the elements and the competition. Ranger Boats, still building legends, one at a time. That's like a new weapon, actually. <laughs> Tug boat. With the sport of bass fishing becoming more and more popular, the fish are getting more educated and tougher to catch. The choice of the Ozuri's top tournament pros is the new Super Fluoro and Super Braid combination. Made in Ozuri's private factory in Japan, Super Fluoro is designed specifically to be used as leader material and comes in sizes as small as four pound test. It's extremely invisible and abrasion resistant. Super Fluoro now gives the advantage back to the fishermen. In 2009, it all started with this 721 Pro XP and a passion to build the best fishing platform in design, performance, and construction for all of our customers. Through the years, motors have changed. Electronics have changed. But the passion to build the best bass boat possible has not changed. Everyone at Phoenix believes we got it right the first time. When you go rogue, you make your own fun. No matter what it looks like. Rogue nicotine pouches. Long lasting, great tasting. Go rogue. Welcome back. Okay, welcome back to the uh, Bassmaster Elite here on Toledo. Uh, the seats have changed. We've got Rick Clark and Jason Christie there. We've been having a great conversation, Christie, so you got to pick up the pace. Okay. Uh, lot, not a lot has changed on the leaderboard, so Fun uh, and I were talking about just how much this lake has changed and how much the sport has changed. You've been involved long enough to see some of those changes yourself. I have. I've, uh, you know, I've seen it go from, I think this is my 15th year, which our uh, 16th year, and it sounds like a lot, but when you're sitting next to this guy, I'm, I'm kind of still a rookie, but I've, you know, I've seen it change and, um, you know, it's changing. Um, it's still changing and it's going to keep changing as long as, uh, as we have people doing, you know, the guys coming up with new things, you know, electronics keep changing and, and the lakes are going to change. They're going to change according to, uh, you know, how the fishing and all that stuff is. But, um, yeah, it's weird. That's, you know, you come to this lake and you expect one thing and, and it's just totally not what you expect or not what I expected. How about you? Well, you put me on the wrong pattern. <laughs> <laughs> you told me about a, a 10 pounder you caught in the canal, and guess where I spent most of my tournament in the canal. <laughs> you, 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 and, you and I both, you know, and it's, there's just, you know, and I, I spoke somewhere the other day at a, I, went, I think I, I did some boat show, and, and one of the things that I told people is, is we have, we, there's not a book in fishing, there's no guidelines. We have, you know, we think that there's guidelines. But if you would, if there were guidelines to come to Toledo Bend on a full moon, water temperature, all the, all of the scenarios we had, it just it tells you to go to the bank and it tells you to get oh, yeah. up there. It, and it's where I want to be. It's yeah. where you want to be. Yeah. And it's uh, so it's it's not hard to get convinced to do it. Yeah. And uh, no, I. Uh, but but yeah, and, I, and it, 
People sometimes ask me, I know you ask me, well, what happened today? And I said, if I knew, I'd figure it out. I, <laughs> right. I, would, I would have changed tomorrow. Right. I said, I, some days you just don't figure it out. Right. Yeah, you don't have a lot. There's not a lot of time out there. That eight hours goes by uh, pretty quick. Yeah, yeah guys, you're going to have to start putting your names on your back so I can recognize That's Luke. You. Luke Palmer. Yeah, Luke. See, you're good. I'm yeah. Not. Well, he turned around, and I saw the front of his hat, and it matched <laughs> okay. one of my hats. You know, and we had this conversation last night at dinner, and I, I really hadn't thought about this. You know, a lot of people are talking about uh, the new guys and how good they are. And don't get me wrong, they are good with that right there. Very. You know, but I think that there's a lot of guys, older guys, that are pretty good with it too. The problem that we have, is we have so much experience doing, you know, the old school. We've had success doing the old school things that we, uh, you know, we get lured into doing that kind of stuff. You know, hey, uh, let's go to the bank and, and try to make it work. And a lot of these guys, I mean, they have so much confidence. They grew up doing it, and that's what they know uh that's what they know best. Well, <clears throat> what I've observed is the learning curve on this is there. Is he, yeah, no, I thought he had one. But the learning curve on this is so short. They can learn this in three years, mm -hmm. okay, if they if they commit. Mm -hmm. What you and I did, it's going to take ten. Yeah. You know, yeah. so for for the older guys to turn around and say, okay, uh, you know, that's what the, we got to realize. Okay, it's not going to take you 10, 15 years. If you commit right. to it, you can learn it quickly. I mean, I can go back to some old school guys. There's Blake Cunningham. If he lived in this era and, and, and Randy Fife, they would kill these kids. They, they were so good with, with just – Going looking down with the flasher, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, they they were committed to this and too committed because they couldn't catch them if they weren't out there, and they and they didn't have the advantage of seeing which way they went. You know, they have, they're constantly looking under the boat. But right. so no, it's it's not it's not it's not a young guy deal. It's a young guy deal because they're willing to do it. Yep, they're doing it. And they're then that's what it's just the things that we learn on the lake, you know, and and. If I hadn't had it on, you know, if I didn't have live scope on, I'd be, you know, you'd be up on the bank. You'd just be like, well, they're, I know they're here. They're just not biting today. I'm telling you, you look at the standings of the guys, and I know that fish shallow. Yeah. We just, I mean, right. we got fooled. And, yeah. and, you know, in practice, yeah. I got just enough bites to might, make me think that they were going to come. Yeah, my, one of my favorite anglers now is, uh, is John Cox, and he actually had a bad day. This time of year, he excels because his eyes are so good. He yeah. can see the swimmers and the betters, even the early ones. But he had a bad day yesterday, uh, you know, and uh, and a bad day for him was my good day yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Um, so, no, it's, you're right. It just timing was bad. Kennedy's a pretty good, you know, jig swimmer this time of year, so. Yeah. Like you know they're bigger because they just look straight to the bottom. So you're like, nope. Trying to drop it right on his head. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you're seeing there, Jason. Well, it looks like to me, uh, you know, you just got this time of year, and and not just this time of year. It's it's all time now. You just got these fish out there roaming. Um, you know they what what I've seen over the years of doing this is is they feed you know for a little while for a little bit and then they just get out there they get out there and roam they sun and cruise around and and uh you know these guys are just using uh live scope forward face sonar whatever and and they're just putting that bait right over the top of them it, one of the things I didn't fish on the lower end and I think that's where I made the mistake um, you know, I stayed around the bridge up here and a little bit north. The water was pretty dirty to do it, and I could still catch some doing it, but it was really, really hard to get the bait close enough to them to get them to react. I think a lot of these guys are down, you know, below where we're sitting now, where the water's a little bit clearer, and uh, and they can just see the bait. But you can tell that these that these fish have seen – these fish have seen some baits. They've, they've seen this technique. So 
you can tell. Explain to Rick and I how you can tell. Just they run from it? No, they don't run from it. They just they don't react to it. And, uh, you know, I, I've been on some lakes, uh, you know, the lake that I live on, you know, around the house. Just, you know, you, you go to places where, I mean, this fish is out. He's out in the center, and it's the same as 10 years ago of flipping in a bush. All right, this fish is swimming out there. Whether he's hungry or he's not, when you drop that bait on the top of his head or put it right above him, I think 95 times out of 100, he's he's just reacting just like the same as if you flipped a jig in on a bush or on a fish in a bush. Uh, so they're, they're reacting. I don't really believe a lot of times, well, they're just not eating. Uh, Cause these guys, they just they they don't they're not reacting. They've seen the same thing. It's just like you put a cat in the living room. You know, the first time you throw that ball across there, he's gonna go for it. The hundredth time you do it, he may not go for it. So, uh, you can definitely tell whenever these some of these fish are fresh or or not. And and a lot of it is just the perfect the perfect cast. You know, putting it right and making them react. If they, I feel like if they see it coming. From a long ways, that you give them more decision. Uh, they, they, you know, they, they may eat it or may not. If you can drop it on their nose, more times than not, you can get them to react. Yeah, we forget that we're dealing with a predator. Yeah. And he's he's got different reasons to function. It's not just to to eat always. It's a lot of times he he's going to dominate his area. If something gets around him that he doesn't want around him. He's he's going to hit it. Doesn't necessarily mean he wants to eat it. But it's also, they're designed to eliminate the weak. Uh, all predators, are, they're not designed to kill the biggest thing all the time. They're, they're designed anything that appears weak. They, nature says, you know, remove it because then you're really helping that species when you remove the weak or the sick. So there's, uh, you, you, a lot of times, that's why topwater works so damn well sometimes in catching bigger fish because the predator says, first of all, it's simple. I don't have to chase it. Mm-hmm. And secondly, it's it's big, and secondly, it's weak. Right. So I, I try to think in those terms whether they're completely accurate or not. Yeah. And that's what you said about the topwaters. The react is the same way with this. You'll see a lot of them shoot up, react to it, just like they would a topwater, and and turn away or even bump it. You know, a lot. Of, you know, you get topwater bites. I believe a lot of times that you miss. They don't even open their mouth. They just blow through it. Uh, and that's the same thing that's happened underwater that you see on live scope. So, does that has that taught you more, or is it just reiterated what you already knew? Well, there's days that I think that I know a lot, and there's <laughs> days there's days like today that I really feel like I, I still have a lot to learn. I. You know, driving down here this morning, um, I've spent as much time looking at live scope. I mean, a lot more than what people think. I mean, I've spent a lot of time doing it uh, over the years. Very fickle. And uh, <coughs> you learn things. But one of the things that I have that I need to do is go to lakes like this that have two, three, seven, eight pounders. You know, I, I fish a lot at home, and we have a lot of two to four pounders and they look uh, they look a lot alike on the screen you know the and the person watching would say well obviously a seven pounder is going to look uh just bigger well it it does sometimes and sometimes it doesn't uh just depending on the angles and stuff like that but uh i just need to go i need to you know this next winter i'm going to spend a lot of time on some of these really big fish lakes um and just study them a little bit more than uh the lake that i live on yeah so, I mean, you, so you can recognize what yep. you're casting to is that is that what you're saying yeah but also how they react and and you know one thing that i've learned over the years is a lot of times you'll get an area and you have a lot of fish a lot of times them big ones they'll kind of be over here by themselves like you know or, or you'll catch a big one I'm it's kind of like fish and shallow it's the same thing you know, you got play. you go down. If you if I have five minutes left to fish, and I can go fish a line of bushes, or one single bush on a point, yeah, I'm probably gonna stop on that single bush. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just them big ones. Like Rick says, they want to own an area for the most part, and and uh, yeah, that'd be my choice. But 
There's, just, there's still a lot to learn. I mean, with this thing, there is still a lot to learn. It was funny. Yesterday I was doing it, and there was a couple of spectator boats that were, they were actually floating to me, and they did nothing wrong. Um, they were probably 50 to 75 yards away, and I had just seen one, and, and I, I went back to cast, and I, had it, I was locked on, and one of them started his engine and put it in gear, and you watch, I watched that fish, fish just kind of scurry. I mean, no, not run, I mean, not, or, but he reacted to that right. 50 yards away. That's got to be it. And, and we don't know the outcome of that yet. Because we do, we're already seeing that they're staying further and further away from this, all this, uh, you know, these, the lateral line of that fish is picking it up. And, and they, you wonder how they get to eat. It's like back when I fished a buzz bait. How did the fish get the email that don't hit a buzz bait anymore? Because it, it, it they, and it's real hard analogy, but this is doing ha same thing is happening here. Is if you let's say you have a fish in this area and the boat comes in and it's filling all this stuff, but it doesn't necessarily associate it with danger yet. But all of a sudden, if Joe leaves and gets yanked up and Mike gets yanked up, and then the next day they hear that same noise in there. Yeah. The nature says, you know, to survive, you got to you got to be totally aware of your environment. And that's not they go. That's not good when that shows up. So they're all well, where I see them. They're staying further and further away from it. Crappie fishermen will tell you the same thing. Right. Yeah, it's funny. I used to in my old house. We had a little, you know, one acre pond, half acre pond, and it was funny because the first day of spring. I turn my kids loose down there. They go down there and throw a spinner bait. They throw a frog. They catch 50. The next day, they get up, go to the rock down there, grab that spinner bait and that frog. Not a bite. <laughs> you will not catch one on it for the rest of summer. Then it's like a yum dinger, you know, and a, a shaky head and stuff like that. I mean, those fish know quickly. They have to survive. Yeah. If they don't pay attention, they yeah. don't. We're, protect, we're in this insulated society that protects us. They're not, yeah. and they've got to pay attention to everything. You know, one of the one of the most fun things that I do is I've taken a few people recently. I took a guy a few weeks ago that came up who fished a lot but really hadn't used a lot of live scope, and he spent two days with me. Uh, you know, he's a buddy and stuff. But teaching people uh about this and just walking them through it on the boat and stuff like that i mean it's they they don't even really i mean they want to catch one but they just they love to watch and learn in it and it, even though you can watch and learn on live uh but to sit there and watch that unit and, and we'll you know we'd follow a fish and you know i'd let him catch it or i'd catch it and you'd watch him come up off the bottom and almost touch their I mean, they come up out of 40 foot and almost touch their nose on the trolling motor. You know, it's just a, <laughs> it's a curious, they're a real curious uh, creature. No, and you, you kept saying learning earlier, and to me, I just one thing, I just don't want us to do anything premature in all this. Or let's get the information and, you know, and they, they, in anything in life, it's the extremes you gotta watch out for, and we don't know what the extremes yet are. But don't don't get rid of rid of the middle ground I mean, because for what you're doing you're censoring knowledge and I don't want anything to censor knowledge because I'm learning so much that I I was wrong about. Yeah. So uh, Jason may not be aware that uh, back in the day that uh, they wanted to ban flipping. Really? I never heard about that. They wanted to ban rod length. Oh. Rod length. Yeah. Everybody went from a pistol handle rod to to a flipping stick. Mm -hmm. And as well, they, that's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, D. Thomas won on Bull Shoals Lake. And Bull Shoals flipping. Flipping, and everybody just started complaining. All the, oh, all the, <laughs> all the man. These rods are too big. You can't put them in my rod box. And it gets in the way of me fishing when he's got that long rod. And it's just, you know, typical whinerous whining. But uh, so, and, and we've seen it with depth finders. And I've told, uh, we talked earlier, it happened with us. They didn't want us around. They didn't want tournament anglers. Riders didn't. They were the authorities, and they didn't want us because we were displacing theory with reality, and it was yeah. displacing them and, and, and indirectly. Right. Conservation people didn't know if they wanted us. And, uh, and if Ray Scott had, can you, Ma, thank goodness Ray Scott introduced Catherine Leaf and 
Yeah. They put live wells in. Can you imagine the amount of fish that have been piled up here in the last two days? Yeah. They, they, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, they wouldn't allow it. Yeah. So thank goodness we took constructive criticism. Well, I mean, all, all along the, the way he did that, he, I mean, he created the classic on this to bring riders and put them in a boat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that started selling them on the process it started selling them on the sport i mean it's hyd uh, hydroa, we've all been on the so veg being banned on the edge of the hydroa <laughs> yeah and i'm no. scoping right along the edge it's funny you talk about them banning and, like, and flipping that was i can remember going with my uncle i was probably any of nine places. or ten you know i'd bass fish to some and I, I i liked it i went in the boat with him and I will. I remember it like it was yesterday. We're going down through there, and and I'd never seen it. <laughs> and he flips into a, a patch of weeds and just, oh, and about a three pounder. He jerks out over the in the air over the boat. I, I went that night. I had like a hundred and fifty bucks saved up, saved up. I went that you night and bit. bought me a flipping stick and a flip, and that was the end. That's. I mean, that's what I fell in love with in the Immediate. beginning was flipping. I mean, being able to go down through there and just flip something and you know be aggressive with them yeah i love that and it, you know and I, I made my career and kevin van Dam made his career based on 2000 casts a day you know the one person that made more presentations than we did a flipper yeah because they, they're not making long cast really mm -hmm. they're doing yeah. like I, I would like to see a good flipper how many how many pitches yeah. he made there. and they're in his, they're in the strike zone yeah. Hackney is that guy, yeah. and Denny was that yeah. guy. Chris has got one. Small one. That's kind of a sign I'm seeing with this to catch. I, I know they've been catching a lot of them late, but if they are catching, uh, if these are, are still females, or I guess most of them are, but it looks like it's got a belly on it. He has two pounds. Three for nine. Now he's caught. He had a five right off the bat this morning, so he's moving. Did he say what it was? Number four. I didn't. I didn't hear him. No. I don't think he did. Still see his friend out there. Yep, it's sunshine. We're on Toledo, and uh, <laughs> we're getting. We got M Mr. Clun and I got. Uh, we got it handed to us out there, and I knew. I knew it. I knew it was gonna. But I. I just felt like I needed to be up there. Well, it's like when I said earlier, I was having fun. Yeah. I was having fun catching those fish because I understood them and I knew how I was going to catch them. And even my partner stated, made that statement and said, what, you're having a good day? And I said, yeah, I'm having a great day until I weigh in. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and then, it does, then yeah. it's not so great. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's been a great day having you all here. We're going to go to a break and we come back. Mr. Clund is going to be uh, replaced with uh, uh, Ger Gerald Swindle, uh, oh boy. a new up-and-coming <laughs> rookie on the Elite Series. And I tried to let you talk, because he ain't going to. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I can just sit here and listen. Well, y'all stay with us. It'll be fun. It'll be a fun next segment. See you then. We will start the class from our set. Well.
Bass fishing isn't just a sport, it's a way of life. And today, I want to talk to you about something more important than winning trophies. Hi, I'm Jeff Gustafson, 2023 Bassmaster Classic Champion. Join me in supporting Bassmaster's conservation efforts. Scan this QR code to learn how you can make a positive impact. Catch and release isn't just a choice, it's a responsibility. For the love of the sport, for the weekend angler, and for a future Bassmaster Classic Champion. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind, casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. Leaders in innovation and anglers at heart. Lose is founded on a rich heritage of building the best. 70 years of cutting edge innovation with one goal in mind, to answer the call of passionate anglers who demand reliability, durability, and tournament level performance. Delivering the best for you to perform at your best on and off the water. So we're not all professional anglers. We don't all compete on the biggest stage. But inside us all burns the same fire to be a champion. It's why you get out early, brave the toughest conditions, point the bow toward adventure and put the hammer down. For whatever trophy or fish or memory you're chasing, count on a Mercury Pro XS outboard, engineered to deliver the speed and reliability you need to power the champion inside you. Get loud for David Mullen. The newest addition to the Basscat STS family is here. Introducing the Caracal STS, showcasing aggressive styling, paired with enhanced performance and a continued dedication to raising the bar. Measuring in at 20 feet 2 inches with an ultra-wide 96-inch beam and rated for a 250 to 300 horsepower engine, the Caracal STS boasts agility and speed and is finished with premium features to satisfy any angler. Fast Cat Boats. Feel the rush. Born in Japan, using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament bass fishing, from household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. champion where performance meets play nitro a big water beast a pure fishing machine nitro release the champion within yes fishing isn't just a hobby it's an obsession whether it's blazing hot or bitterly cold bright sunshine raining or even snowing someplace somewhere there's a fish that's ready to bite and as the angler, you need baits that will catch the fish anywhere, anytime, no matter the conditions. From throwing top waters to cranking the depths, know the baits to throw. Choose Spro.
Think you know fishing? Time to prove it. Bassmaster has two fantasy games giving you even more opportunities to win. Play Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and the Falcon Rods Bassmaster Drain the Lake Challenge for a chance to win some great prizes, including a $15,000 shopping spree at Bass Pro Shops, a trip to the 2025 Classic, or a fishing trip with Luke Palmer. Every tournament is a chance to win, and there's more than $90,000 in prizes to be won in 2024. You can't win if you don't play, plus it's free. For details, sign up and play all season. Visit BassmasterFantasy.com. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches. Great taste. No compromises. Go rogue. Welcome back to Live Mix. Sitting here with Gerald Swindle and Jason Christie. Not a lot has changed on the leaderboard. We got uh, Slapper has got three fish now with eight pounds. Robert G's got three fish with six. Koya's got one fish. Chris Johnson's got three fish for nine. Patrick Walters is there with his uh, three fish that weigh four pounds, and I'll bet you many dollars that. That's, that's, a, that's a White House press release right there. That's incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> So, have you been paying any any attention to to the tournament at all today? I haven't. I haven't. I'm one thing I'm a little bit uh, perplexed about is uh, Fajita. I call him like he's caught him every morning really quick. I fished down in an area around him yesterday, and he caught him like this right steady. It was it was quite impressive how many four pounders he caught that fast. Like it, it was like it was saltwater fishing. So for him to only have one this morning, did he? Do you guys know if he tried a new area? Don't know that. But it was weird. He stayed there all day. Now, not not on the same spot, but in the same seven, eight hundred yard circle. Because I seen him at there early, mid morning, lunch, and right at quitting time, he was still there. So maybe did he burn him out? I don't know. He wasn't burned out yesterday because he was steadily reeling them in. It hurt my feelings, Jason. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was. Uh, how many do you think he caught yesterday, Steve? Did you? Oh, I'd have to look, but it, he he's. 50, 60. He he caught him. He caught. He, it just progressively seemed to get better, though. Yes, like he was steadily catching him yesterday afternoon. Like literally every time you glanced over, and I was a good ways from him, he was lipping another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. And after a while, it's just like watching somebody dance with your girlfriend. I'm like, I gotta leave. That <laughs> just hurt my feelings. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Guys, all where is that? Housing. That's Hurricane Creek right there that they're in. I'm pretty sure there's a big glare up there, but that's the islands going in housing. That's where Phil is sitting the whole time. Uh, Luke Palmer's out on the edge of the flats. I've seen him out there. Ben Milliken was in there. I was on the inside. So, yeah, right all that goes down the mouth of housing. That's what it looks like. And I don't know where Pat Slapper's at. Do you? I have no idea. He's right there at the mouth. And, you know, his lava, it might be, uh, might have got cool last night. I might have to warm up today. But I'm like, Steve, like yesterday afternoon looked pretty hot for him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was quite impressive. There was a quite a, there was quite a few. I mean, even Pat Slapper caught uh, uh, one close to seven or eight uh, late in the day. I heard that several times in the weigh-in line. Carl said he caught his seven-pounder in the last hour, which got him his check, you know, put him at the 20-pound mark. And he said it was pretty much had 12 pounds all the way up to 1 o'clock, and he said he caught three good ones in a row. Mm. Boy, they are lined up right there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're talking about uh, – how do you pronounce his first name? Koya? Koya. Sounds you're, good. You're talking about Koya catching them like that. Imagine what he's not even cast, you know, not casting right. that. I mean, he's like, oh, man. I mean, he's he's probably like, oh, that one's not big enough. I'm gonna go that. Don't, don't. I watched him yesterday uh, from a distance, like what you could, what I could tell, and it doesn't take you long to realize that when you see Brian New, see all these other guys around him, I'm within a couple hundred yards of him. None of our poles are bent. 
Mm -hmm. And we're all doing the same thing. If you watch him, he's not scanning very fast. It come to like there toward the end of the day, I think he's uh, fishing on the bottom. I don't think he's looking for suspended fish. I don't think there's something he's doing different to catch him that fast. Because you would watch him a lot of times. He fishes a lot slower. He's not scanning real fast. So maybe... Maybe on the Garmin, and Jason, you know more about that. On the perspective, maybe in perspective, he's seeing something there. Maybe little dots or something that he, because I noticed a lot of those fish would press right to the bottom in those ditches. Mm -hmm. And you could throw, and when your bait got to the bottom, when you thought it was a bad cast, sometimes you go to reel it up, you would see one chase it. So maybe he figured out that. I do know this, and I watched you and him together last year on uh seminole seminole he's he's a pretty cool cucumber i mean he is a, he's sitting yeah. back and he doesn't get in a hurry he didn't get in a hurry no he'd catch a big one nothing. sit down and retie at seminole last year you know the first two days we fished around each other and they're sight fishing i beat him i'm like bub showing you something <laughs> day three he beat the brakes off me I mean, he beat the brakes off me, and he was just, he'd catch one of them big ones and sit down, and literally, Jason, it might take him five minutes to sit there and retie leaders, and he'd straighten his boat up and get a drink of water, and I'd, and then he'd get back up, man, a whole big one. I'm like, I just, like his ice veins right there. Uh, Maybe you should call him, like, <laughs> Kioi Ice or some frozen ice, because he is a very laid-back, calm dude. I think one of the things that he like, and I probably agree. We'll we'll know whenever we watch him hook up. You know how long, how long it, it takes. takes him. But what you know what what happens a lot out there is you know a lot of these guys, including myself, you're going around trying to get the easy floaters. You know the ones eight, ten, twelve foot deep. But that's only a very small, ten percent of the population. And you watch these bass, like a lot of them. You know they come up. They float for a while, and then they go right back to the bottom. That's, you know, he, he's probably figured out a lot of it. You know, and I'm wondering sometimes if he ain't just looking for the tree, casting beside it, and then working his bait to see if he can see. Yeah. But I, I the, the whole key we want to know on this show, if somebody can find out, I want to know what the weight of the head is he's fishing. That would tell everybody everything. Because everybody around him is fishing a 3 sixteenths or a .5 grams or whatever they put it into. And I just got a feeling yesterday afternoon I swapped to a 3 8 ounce head and I caught my second biggest fish. I went a lot heavier, got down a lot faster. I just think he might be the guy that we all think is something light, but it's heavy. Yeah. And he could be targeting the target and then making, like you said, making the fish show himself because everybody around him, including me, were looking for one sitting up. When you seen the dot up by itself, that fish was very, very catchable. Mm -hmm. Very catchable. If you could make the cast in the wind, he doesn't seem to be fighting. I noticed, like, the wind, even when it got bad, he stays put where other guys would migrate out of the wind so they could try to make the cast at the floating dock. So you sit back and watch it. I'm like, he's got something figured out. But in the tournament, like at that time, I only had three around him, and I'm like, I got to keep doing what I know to do to try to catch five. But everybody's chasing floating dots. And, boy, if you got the right cast on a floating dot, you could catch him. But if you missed, <laughs> he gone. He gone. Why is that? It's like uh, he's, like Jason said, he floats up, I think, to warm. And I think he's just kind of, he has no protection. He's just kind of sitting there. And if you miss or hit too close to him or hit on top of him and it falls by, it spooks him. So the cast has to be so precise behind him, stay above him. Don't fall too fast. And a lot of times in the wind, you couldn't find him again. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you almost had to live scope straight into the wind the whole time. And I fought it so bad. And I don't know, Jason, you're probably a lot better at that than me. I kept wanting to throw sideways. Yeah, that's a, that's hard <laughs> to do. It's like, so you and I would compare that to the viewers at home. That's like throwing crosswinds in a lily pad. Oh, shallow water OGs like me and you, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. And if you're fishing topped out grass, you never throw across it. You, you know, you have to go into the wind or with the wind and try to fish the strands of the grass long way. You can't. So 
I just fought it so bad, you know, so desperately just fanning around. And when you would see one, you're just like, oh, my God, throw. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, w wouldn't it make sense that it would be – that he would be using a heavier – I think so, Steve. I think he – at the speed that he caught him yesterday, let me tell you something. I felt like I was watching – uh, David Fritz blitz from back in the 90s when I fished against him at one time at Cherokee. He caught him every cast on a crankbait with a flasher till I literally got tired of watching him catch him. Like, I literally, he probably caught over 50 or 60 in the first hour at Cherokee, and I just left. I was like, I can't watch anymore. You know, that's what how fast he was catching them. And they're all in housing. There's old Hamner. That's a fish catching machine yeah, right there. Well, I like that kid too, yeah, man. Yeah, he's, he's a good kid. You know how he caught him yesterday? You, you ready for this? Come on. These Jig on docks. Come on. <laughs> Jason's looking at me like I will cut you in the front. Uh oh. He said, "Holes in the grass and stuff with hard spots." That was kind of set up in that. Swing old big jig in there. Let him eat. So now he's jigging in the grass. He told me I was in, in line with him the first day. He told me he caught a bunch on a trap the first Plus day. It just feels better in the grass. I told him I didn't have a good day, and this is how good of a kid he was. He goes, hey, if you want to come down here and fish with me, he goes, I got a pocket. You can catch all you want, three pounders. And, and I was like, no. Nope. No. It's just not. That's you just, just not. Got, you I, like me, so yeah. you got too much pride. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, no, I'll keep throwing no, my spinner bait. Full yeah. moon. This, I mean, you know, if I'm gonna suck it up, I'm gonna suck it all day like long. I'm just gonna do me. Right. It's got to be any day. He said yesterday he slid up by some docks just looking for a fish, and he said he's scanning there the same one. He said he skipped to it, and he said he just knocked three foot of slack in it. He said I slacked yeah, night, and was thinking, ooh, Swindle be proud. <laughs> Well, what a great technique, and what I struggled finding, Jason, was grass that had a lot of holes in it. Yeah. I could not. I, you know, it's really hard to find, but I noticed he's a little further down the lake. Looked like he might be actually below six miles. Mm -hmm. I never ventured down that far. I kind of felt like it was going to be a popular area, and I stayed out of it, and that's probably why I'm sitting right here. No, <laughs> the reason we're here is we're hard-headed, and we thought we could go to the bank on day one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, this day and time, the only reason you need to go to the bank is to have a dude wipe break. <laughs> <laughs> you better stay out. Those fish are going to go to the bank at some point in time. I don't know. I, 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 I'm with you, Steve. They're going to, but um, I don't think you can still beat them. Yeah, I mean, I, I can. I mean, I see uh, Swindle's point there. It, it, there'll be a percentage go, even if a wave goes. There's going to be three fourths of them still out there, and then whenever that first wave goes, there's going to be another wave set up right where they are, and then at some point they're going to come back out. I do think though, after they spawn, they tend to kind of get closer to the bottom. You know what I mean? Where yeah. ain't that around six mile where he's at? I think so. The creek below it. Yeah, he. I think he looks like he's more main lake to me. Yeah, right there around the point. You know, I don't think the way nature works and the good Lord, he don't never let all the deer rut at the same time because oh, no. hunters would wipe them out. Not all turkeys gobble and, and do everything at the same time or the hunters would wipe them out. So I think there's a part of the ecosystem that the good Lord just said every bass in the lake's not going to spawn at the same time. So the percentage that sits out, if they find them, they're large. Well, we Rick and I were having Clun and I were having this conversation earlier because uh, back in the day, you know, Ricky Green was my mentor and spent a lot of time with him and and Green and and Clun and and all those guys believed at that point in time that we were all we we're ever doing is fishing for ten percent of the fish anyway. Ninety percent are always back there behind you, and I think that this format is teaching us. Yeah, that there's a lot of truth to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's taught us a lot, and it still has a lot more to teach us. I think every lake, you know, we're going to learn something different at a lot of the different lakes that we go to. I think it, what, what you're going to see is even when you think it's not going to play, there's so many guys that that's all they do. 
it's still going to play. They have no other temptation in their life to do nothing else. So you're going to see them get so creative with it in aspects. I mean, you just seen Scott Martin win the Open using perspective and what, four and five foot of water. Mm -hmm. That was cool, too. And my nephew started there, but and he said, Scott, come in. He said, I got there first on day one. He said, and I caught two in a row, and he said, thinking, I'm big time. And he said, then the butt whip him again. Mm. And he said, I don't know what he was doing. I said, he was using perspective and pinpointing his cast. Mm. And using a heavier weight. Yeah. Heavier, bigger hey. jig. He kept it down there on the bottom a lot longer. You but know. the other part of that is that Scott is good at that. He's real good. But he, he didn't he, make the cut today. No. no. So, I, so it's not it's not like that you're going to be impervious. No, when you have it, it doesn't mean that it's uh, – it, it, I mean, you're sitting by a full Garmin guy right here. Yeah, and that, it's, it's just like bank fishing. I mean, Scott won the Open. He didn't find that group this event. It's just the same way, you know, fishing the bank. Sometimes you find them and sometimes you don't, even though you're, you know, you're fishing the same. And uh, Fioil, uh, uh, he, he was in that Open, and he what, was in the 150s. Yeah. He just didn't find the right fish. Or he hasn't had enough experience in shallow water lakes to get his knowledge of where to be. I think in deep water lakes and stuff like this, he is so good at, at knowing where to go troll and look. It's not, you know, that Okeechobee live scoping, I seen some, you know, you see them guys in the canals and all that, and you see Scott out, but it's probably going to forever change how we fish in the spring. Mm -hmm. Man, I hate to hear that. <laughs> if me and you were coming here and I said, hey, Jason, let's meet you go fun fishing at Toledo, the water temperature 60 in the back of the creeks, you'd have said, I'm bringing my jig box. My spinnerbait box and my buzzbait G picked me up at the ramp. That's We're right. going to go get in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, it's temptation. The temptation is because you enjoy that. It's your knowledge. It's That's the, you know, when you type it in Google search in my mind in the spring and the water temperature, I automatically go to that. Secondary points, last little pockets going in the creek, how far have they migrated back. You do all that process, and you're like, hmm. It's 12 pounds, and you go out to the mouth of the creek, and Bill Owen said he'd come out of the back of the house in the last day of practice, and he said he got to the mouth, and it was like 30 boats. He said a little old tear run down his eye. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and that's not going to change. I mean, those nope. fish are going to eventually do that. Yeah. I mean, some of them are maybe getting cut off by those 30 boats out there, but uh, I'm going to cut you all off right here for, uh, during this discussion. We're going to go to a break, come back with uh, Gerald Swindle and Jason Christie. So. The old school warriors. Introducing the most powerful Tacoma ever. Shut the front With door. the shut the front door handle. Also known as the seriously wrong seriously handle. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Or the whoa, 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 whoa handle. And even no, 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 no me gusta. the no me gusta handle. Standard on the all-new Toyota Tacoma. We believe in bass fishing, but we believe in bass catching even more. We make products for hardcore anglers. We design, build, test, and redesign until it's right. We cut our teeth on 15-pound floral and 30-pound braid. We only admit to bleeding when we get bass thumb. We're here for serious anglers. We are serious anglers because those of us that earn this badge are untouchable. We are Bass Mafia. Buy more, save more with Lowrance. Are you ready to take your fishing to the next level? Get a huge rebate of up to $4,000 when you purchase selected gear from Lowrance and a whole range of leading marine brands. Scan the on-screen code or visit Lowrance.com to level up your boat today. It's the moment 
when everything is on the line and precision, power, and control make all the difference. A moment over 20 years in the making, anchored on loyalty, trust, and support that goes beyond all expectations. A relentless pursuit of perfection, all born from a revolutionary idea to help you rule the water. Power Pole. A lot of our customers are guys that are sitting in a takeoff every Saturday morning and using their AVX as a platform to go win some serious money. This is not your grandpa's old aluminum boat. Of course, with the Vexus, I was expecting a good ride. I was not expecting to be as smooth as it was and as quick out of the hole. It comes out of the hole like butter. It shoots just like a bullet. It takes waves. Amazing. You can't tell the difference between a fiberglass and an aluminum. It's a boat that's going to surprise the heck out of you. the elite series like truly means everything to me because i've truly set my whole life up to do this and i feel like now i'm there fishing against the best in the world the yamaha v-max v6 sho continues to deliver the level of performance that pro bass and multi-species anglers demand Underneath a bold and aggressive new look, an upgraded charging system with 40% more charging power meets the amped up demand for today's advanced electronics. The VMAX SHO, raw power, reliability, and exhilarating performance for every angler who loves the sport enough to invest in the best. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Welcome to Minnow King, how can I help you? Everything looks good. I'm friggin' starving, man. Been spawning all morning. Ugh, TMI, bro. What do you want? I'll take a Crush City Freeloader and Gizzard Shad. Anything to drink? Water. Pull ahead, please. Welcome to Minnow King. We're gonna have what he's had. Yeah, throw me in a Ned BLT, too. Pull ahead, please. Calm down. Quit feeding him so much. I mean, I'm trying to, man. If you, if you, if you overfeed him, he's gonna hide under a log. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches. Great taste. No compromises. Go Rogue. I'm just looking for this, I'm scanning around, trying to find this bait, or find the fish in the bait. I found a lot of bait this morning, but the fish seem to have vacated the premises. But I'm gonna just look around for a little bit longer, and then I'm going to roll out and try to fish something different, because I, back here is not working so far today. There, was, there has been a lot of guys fishing back here, but there were so many fish back here, it's, it's crazy to think that there's just not any more. But hopefully we can find them. We'll, we'll land on them at some point today, and I'm looking forward to it. I like, I want to catch a few more of these big Toledo Bend Biggins. 
big toads. But if I can catch two more, that's all I'm, all I'm gonna do the rest of the day is I'm gonna head hunt. Look for them big tail waggers. Exclusively. Heck, 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 I might, probably not. I like to catch them too good, but. That's what my goal is. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's crazy that they have, I guess they're up there on the bank, maybe. Or they're just, I don't know, still eating biscuits and gravy this morning at Grandma's house. They gotta come get their appetizer, the shad, later on this evening. So we'll see how it goes. We will see. Thank you, man. I'm gonna try. I, I know you are. I'm gonna give it all I got. There, there. It looks like they vacated the premises over here. Good job on the cameraman. He's doing a good job. This yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I really like how you can see my screen on the, oh, yeah. on the thing. Just so people can see what I'm actually doing. Yeah. It's, kind of involved with filing. it's awesome. We might have one right here. That's a spotted bass if I've ever seen one. He's doing dang dances or he's hitting the soldier boy around my bait. That was the wildest. He literally hit the soldier boy or the nene on my bait. That's what he did. He hit the nene on my bait. He said, oop, nope, not today, buddy. Please don't hit the nene. Eat it. Come on, you see this little dancing shed? I guess he didn't. Ooh. I might see one. I'm gonna have to track him down. Where'd he go? Come on, show yourself. Don't. He might have went back down to the. Oh, no, there he is. Big turtle? Yeah.
Yeah, buddy. Not looking, not looking bright right now for the bass. They might be out here deeper. We'll go give it a look, give it a scan, and then we're gonna roll. Oh my gosh, look at all this bait. I need to go out and check my basin out there. See if there's any more big swimming. You know another good thing about live scope? Is when you're at this flooded timber places like this, you can actually see where you're gonna just crack the bottom of your boat at. <laughs> so you don't run them over. Very thankful for that. So I just had to swerve that pop again. One, I think there's one in that bait ball right there. Maybe. What if, uh, is the camera guy named Sago? Uh, yeah. What if he was up in that tree right there <laughs> taking our picture? That'd be awesome. They need to they need to get him up in a tree and some aerial views. Aerial snapshots. Eat it, baby. It ain't going to, though. That's a big one, too. So you can see his tail. You know, we talked all that crap about maybe that's the right size, then this happens. 
Like that's a that's a five or six pounder probably. <sighs> just bigs following stuff around, just hanging out, not wanting to eat this morning. Let's give them a little bit of little Great Lakes to nest and see if they like the little stuff this morning. They really haven't though. They've kind of been turning off a bit and actually eating a little bit bigger bait. Just one of those things you just got to kind of keep trying on them. Oh, keep changing up. Even though it's kind of hard to. If I could get this one to eat, we'd be probably fishing tomorrow just with this one here eating. crazy how much these fish have just changed every day out here. And there's some guys like, hell, they probably hadn't changed at all. You just don't know how to catch them. So, well, that's probably a good point, too. There's definitely more fish out here today than there has been, for sure. I'm going to change this color out. This kind of step to you. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Thank you. like a whole pack of them over here on the side. What a dummy. I've got Aaron hollering at you the whole time. Last night, get your stuff ready, get your stuff. Put this, do that, catch fish. Let's see if they want a little change of action in the sonar minnow color. Yeah, Christy didn't give me any of these for the classic that year he won, which I thought was very selfish. Been hiding stuff like that for me for years. One good thing about throwing doing this though is I'm not gonna backlash all day. Which that is a big positive. <sighs> Introducing the most powerful Tacoma ever. Shut the front With door. the shut the front door handle. Also known as the seriously raw handle. Or the whoa, 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 whoa handle. And even the no me gusta handle. Standard on the all new Toyota Tacoma. We believe in bass fishing, but we believe in bass catching even more. We make products for hardcore anglers. We design, build, test, and redesign until it's right. We cut our teeth on 15 pound floral and 30 pound braid. We only admit the bleeding when we get bass thumb. We're here for serious anglers. We are serious anglers because those of us that earn this badge are untouchable. We are Bass Mafia. Buy more, save more with Lowrance. 
Are you ready to take your fishing to the next level? Get a huge rebate of up to $4,000 when you purchase selected gear from Lowrance and a whole range of leading marine brands. Scan the on-screen code or visit Lowrance.com to level up your boat today. It's the moment when everything is on the line and precision, power, and control make all the difference. A moment over 20 years in the making, anchored on loyalty, trust, and support that goes beyond all expectations. A relentless pursuit of perfection, all born from a revolutionary idea to help you rule the water. Power Pole. A lot of our customers are guys that are sitting in a takeoff every Saturday morning and using their AVX as a platform to go win some serious money. This is not your grandpa's old aluminum boat. Of course, with the Vexus, I was expecting a good ride. I was not expecting to be as smooth as it was and as quick out of the hole. It comes out of the hole like butter. It shoots just like a bullet. It takes waves. Amazing. You can't tell the difference between a fiberglass and an aluminum. It's a boat that's going to surprise the heck out of you. to watch them every every Sunday on ESPN. We've had our leaders trying to hang on for dear life. We've had some other anglers make a furious charge in some cases. You know, and to be able to fish the Elite Series like truly means everything to me because I've truly set my whole life up to do this. In the top 10 fishing championship Sunday, all down the And I feel like now I'm there fishing against the best in the world. The Yamaha VMAX V6 SHO continues to deliver the level of performance that pro bass and multi-species anglers demand. Underneath a bold and aggressive new look, an upgraded charging system with 40% more charging power meets the amped up demand for today's advanced electronics. The VMAX SHO, raw power, reliability, and exhilarating performance for every angler who loves the sport enough to invest in the best. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Welcome to Minnow King. How can I help you? Everything looks good. I'm friggin' starving, man. Been spawning all morning. Ugh, TMI, bro. What do you want? I'll take a Crush City Freeloader and Gizzard Shad. Anything to drink? Water. Pull ahead, please. Welcome to Minnow King. We're gonna have what he's had. Yeah, throw me in a Ned BLT, too. Pull ahead, please. Calm down. Quit feeding so much. Oh, yeah, man, I'm trying to, man. If you, if you, if you overfeed him, he's gonna hide under a log. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches. Great taste. No compromises. Go rogue. Right, we're out here floating around. the back of uh, housing, and I didn't. A little bit of practice, but I found him yesterday afternoon and caught some. Caught some big fish out here. So I. Something's telling me though, I think it, it, for the afternoon. For
for whatever reason these fish are getting up higher because it was they were big they were big ones I don't know if it's so much the area and I I broke off a big one too probably a little bit of area but oh no that one's no good why I seen that I don't know if it's just the area is it it's just maybe a timing deal been doing so I didn't really have an idea what happened just decided to come out here to look around it's a 45 foot creek channel in timber But I think they're they're just following it. They're not they're just maybe popping, but I can tell they're they're definitely deeper. Maybe on the bottom early. They're hard to catch. They're hard to see too when they get down there, and they're not. No, these fish are not sitting still. They're just. That's what they do, I guess. Bass are not. They have tails. They can swim. I was so stressed out though the first day just to be able to catch a few fish. I don't care. It's been it's been solid so far, so this is the trend right now though, y'all are gonna see a lot of this. It's just these bigger fish are out. They're not. They haven't made a big push yet. There's two right there. They're in 28 foot of water and swimming. I don't know if they're two pounders or ten pounders. They're probably not tens, but. I didn't even think they were bass. Actually, go up to the next little. Next little bend up here. 
Let's kill him over there. Yeah. Already 915 is flying by. Need to come back here later, maybe. There's more swimming. Gotta find some fish. Got her. I don't know what it is. Little bass. The keeper. <clears throat> she wanted it too. That's a keeper. One pounder, but it's a keeper. 21 pounds? Yeah. Keep plucking away at him. He 
need to get under your bag real quick. Two. Dude, that one ate it like I wish they all would. My goodness. It was like, do what? Yeah, dude. I mean, it's seen it and it came in like it had never ate a minnow in its life. Seen one with no hesitation. It looked big out there, but sometimes when they're far away, they just show up real good like that. I'll take it though. Yeah, you can put him in as like a 1-3 or something like that. Whatever you do, do not <laughs> overestimate my fish. That's the cardinal sin. A bit better. And I mean, I got two good ones doing that, so. And I can guarantee you, my bait's been in front of three or four other big ones. I just didn't didn't close the deal on them. They're they're not easy to catch. So, but we're gonna keep throwing until they want the food. Hmm. So five or six through a tree. Little spots. Two or tree pounder. Did they play any fish catches? Huh? Did they play any of my Oh my god. What is that? They played the one from yesterday afternoon. I wanna see that one. <laughs> That was a crazy one. God, I hope I can tie into a couple more like that. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, the only ones I've had that have really aggressively come up for it was that one I just caught that I missed and then right away I had a couple come up and that I missed back there. But other than that, they're really, they're not getting up as high yet, which is common till the afternoon, but um, it's you, they're not easy to catch. They're just kind of chasing it and following it, nipping at it. You know, I've had a few of them just nip at it, so it's, they're just getting tricky, which they were tricky yesterday too, but all it takes is, you know, you get a couple couple of them high brewers drop it in there and they go crazy so hopefully that happens three more times so no it's about the same it's 55 degrees you know yesterday and late in the afternoon it was like 57 and a half but it's it's not warm this it's colder today than it was yesterday But I'm sure in the backs of the bays, it's there, there's probably fish spawning right now. I mean, I guarantee you there is, but I don't know if you'd be able to, well, chances of doing good with in that, doing that right now are probably pretty slim unless you know some real secret places that they move into first.
Um, yeah, it's not as many right now, but I'm still seeing some.
It's boring, I know. And just this type of fishing that I'm not even really casting. It's like watching paint dry. At least back in the old days, there was the anticipation of getting a bite. Right. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real-time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern. The best of the best just got better. Clear images. Sharper resolution, improved target separation. That's right, better. LiveScope Plus, only from Garmin. Hunger is contagious with bass. Playing off a fish's instincts, the Hydro Wave incorporates recorded sound vibrations that a fish would naturally hear or feel, provoking them to act. Look at that. Look, look, look. Pre-programmed with sounds and settings that let you fine-tune what the fish hears. Gosh, what I bite. Whether you're matching the hatch. Look at that thing. Presenting something new or just trying to dial up the excitement when you're bound to school. The Hydro Wave provokes for extra bites. It's time to buy, save fish now until March 31st. Skeeter is offering rebates of up to 5000 on 2023 and 24 models or your choice of Yamaha factory financing with rates as low as 4.99% or 5.99% with zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for 90 days for qualified buyers. With buy, save fish, there's never been a better time to get into a new Skeeter boat. But this fantastic offer won't last long, so stop into your local Skeeter boats dealer today before this deal gets away. Way. Skeeter Boats. Eat, sleep, fish. New Mega Live Imaging shows you what's below in real time with edge-to-edge -edge clarity and no gaps in coverage. All so you can turn must-watch detail into non-stop action, only from Humminbird. Any fish, any water. Have you considered purchasing new electronics for your rig? The type of mounts you choose to protect your investment should be part of the decision-making process. No matter if you prefer one, two, or three graph mounts up front, Beatdown Outdoors has a solution for you. Adjustable, versatile, rigid, and made in the USA. What's your ultimate electronic setup? Check out the full selection of Beatdown Outdoors products. And remember, you can't beat a beatdown. When there's miles of water in front of you and hundreds of feet below, you need a boat with the chops to dominate, no matter the conditions. With the strength and technology to overcome the elements and the competition. Ranger Boats, still building legends, one at a time. That's like an A-11, actually. <laughs> Tug boat! With the sport of bass fishing becoming more and more popular, the fish are getting more educated and tougher to catch. The choice of the Ozuri's top tournament pros is the new Super Fluoro and Super Braid combination. Made in the Ozuri's private factory in Japan, 
Superfluoro is designed specifically to be used as leader material and comes in sizes as small as four pound test. It's extremely invisible and abrasion resistant. Superfluoro now gives the advantage back to the fishermen. In 2009, it all started with this 721 Pro XP and a passion to build the best fishing platform in design, performance, and construction for all of our customers. Through the years, motors have changed. Electronics have changed. But the passion to build the best bass boat possible has not changed. Everyone at Phoenix believes we got it right the first time. When you go rogue, you make your own fun. No matter what it looks like. Rogue nicotine pouches. Long lasting, great tasting. Go rogue. I see a, uh, what looks to be a big one. But it might be, oh, please, please, please bass. Please be a bass. Please see my bait. Uh, it doesn't look like a bass. He's giving too much of a shimmy in his, like a, not as a hard return, it might be a cat. But I'm gonna cast at him one more time. Oh, too short. Yeah, that's not a bass. He was, he wasn't giving off a good glow like the bass do. He was, he was kind of just like, I don't know. He was just kind of faded out, which bass, the scales on the bass kind of show up a little bit brighter on live scope than a catfish, which is a little more softer return. So it's, it doesn't have as a bright a pop, if that makes sense. I'm looking for the toad. I made the switch zone. I hope you're happy. I got the I got the bait caster in my hand. No spinning rod right now. I actually pulled up here and caught a couple real quick. So it's 
just got to plunk around. You'll find these little holes in the grass. And Normally, there's a few sitting in them. I don't know where the, the groups were that I'd found in practice out here. I'd, and they were good ones, you know, four pounders and so, which I guess four pounders don't do you really any good anymore. Yeah, the boat traffic has definitely put a lot of floating grass in here now. I mean, there's a couple of boats in here now. <laughs> Jeez. First day, there's like six. As soon as I get away from the edge, though, I start not seeing as many. The guy literally pulled right over on top of where I was catching him and got a spinning rod out.
Well, I'm working on some that are pretty low on the bottom. They're not up as high as I want them to be, but every once in a while you'll get a big one down on the bottom. Seems like for the most part the ones tight to the bottom are spotted bass. But I've been surprised a few times, so it's, uh, it's, I'm not seeing as many fish now. There's quite a few boats around me now. Um, I think we'll fish here a little bit more and then we'll go down through my other area, start moving around a little bit, I think. Sample a few things. I still got some stuff further up I haven't got to yet. And then in the back of that big pocket, I've, I've got an area I haven't fished yet that I plan on today. So, <clears throat> I mean, we got a decent bag. We just, but we got a lot of room to grow. But the goal, 25. My goal is to win this event. And if I'm gonna win this event, 18 pounds today ain't gonna do it. This looks like a good fish. I, I don't know if it's, it's a bass or not. I think it is. Yeah, I know. I would love to have that happen again. I just, I don't know. I've had them kind of react to it a couple times, but usually when it gets to this point, they're probably not gonna bite. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind, 
casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. Leaders in innovation and anglers at heart. Lose is founded on a rich heritage of building the best. 70 years of cutting edge innovation with one goal in mind, to answer the call of passionate anglers who demand reliability, durability, and tournament level performance. Delivering the best for you to perform at your best on and off the water. So we're not all professional anglers. We don't all compete on the biggest stage. But inside us all burns the same fire to be a champion. It's why you get out early, brave the toughest conditions, point the bow toward adventure and put the hammer down. For whatever trophy or fish or memory you're chasing, count on a Mercury Pro XS Outboard, engineered to deliver the speed and reliability you need to power the champion inside you. Get loud for David Mullen. The newest addition to the Basscat STS family is here. Introducing the Caracal STS, showcasing aggressive styling, paired with enhanced performance, and a continued dedication to raising the bar. Measuring in at 20 feet 2 inches with an ultra-wide 96-inch beam and rated for a 250 to 300 horsepower engine, the Caracal STS boasts agility and speed and is finished with premium features to satisfy any angler. Bass Cat Boats. Feel the rush. Born in Japan, using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament yes, bass fishing, sir. from household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. Release the champion within. Yes. Fishing isn't just a hobby, it's an obsession. Whether it's blazing hot or bitterly cold, bright sunshine, raining or even snowing, someplace, somewhere, there's a fish that's ready to bite. And as the angler, you need baits that will catch the fish anywhere, anytime, no matter the conditions. From throwing top waters to cranking the depths, know the baits to throw, choose Spro. Think you know fishing? Time to prove it. Bassmaster has two fantasy games giving you even more opportunities to win. Play Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and the Falcon Rods Bassmaster Drain the Lake Challenge for a chance to win some great prizes, including a $15,000 shopping spree at Bass Pro Shops, a trip to the 2025 Classic, or a fishing trip with Luke Palmer. Every tournament is a chance to win, and there's more than $90,000 in prizes to be won in 2024. You can't win if you don't play, plus it's free. For details, sign up and play all season. Visit BassmasterFantasy.com. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. 
Rogue nicotine pouches. Great taste. No compromises. Go Rogue. Can be so lame at times. You ah! <laughs> got him. I, I tell you what, I can at least I can make it look somewhat interesting. Well, I appreciate that. Six pound braid to a ten pound leader. I got one with twelve. And if I do that one more time, I'm probably gonna go back to it. To be honest, it has no difference with, oh my God, this is a big one. Oh, it might be two of them together. It is two. They both look good though. What a spot. I don't think he's gonna call. Them spots streaked very large, it's just for some reason. I actually don't know how to use live scope though. Nope. Can't gauge them. Not sure how to use it. I just point and cast. There's two super deep. Let's see if they'll rise up. Behind a tree. The only thing is I hear there's a lot more timber, like a lot more. And that doesn't mean they're gonna be in it, but the thing is you gotta worry about fighting them. Getting hung up in it because, I mean, there'd be 10 pieces of timber between me and the fish. And the odds of him taking the path of least resistance is not always likely. I don't think it matters at all for them. It's just what I had most of. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think it matters for them biting for what these fish are doing. It looks like one in this tree. Let me just check it. Um, that's why if I pop off, I'll cut this leader off and tie 12 on it. This is the rod I want to catch them on. It's got, I got the right little twitch down with it. It's every rod's different. It's honestly the kind of one that fits you is the one you kind of got to go with. 100% like golf clubs. Like I usually like long rods, but this is a short rod, but it's a little 610. It's actually a medium light. 
It just I don't set the hook too early on them that often. You still will. Dang, they're deep. I don't want them to be that deep. Your head. Uh-oh, that's what I'm looking for, is that old loon. I think it should have been him. Oh, there's two. It's gonna feel nice today. Yeah, I know, now that that wind's finally slowed up. Or we're going with it, I guess. There's a little ball of bait. That's a big fish. There's one swimming to that tree from the back side, of course. This just looks like a pop-off waiting to happen.
Let me get up on this flat. I've been in the river channel that are not really in that channel that well. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you throw it in front of them, they're swimming fast and they go behind it. It's like they're, they know you're throwing at them, so they change their course of direction. Doesn't matter which way you throw. That's gonna kick. We're about to go though, three minutes. Three minutes. I've got to find five four pounders or a seven and seven eight, something like that, to go with some others. See, they're swimming to me and then I throw it just short of them to try to get it in front of them and they stop, start going the other way. I mean, some of them can be catfish, especially out here. You, you just never know what you're throwing at, but. See, now they, I got it in front of them. Now they turned it going back the other way. I know those aren't bass though. We gotta go. Gama got to Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend. Watching Stetson here. He's chasing one around. I'm sitting with Greg Hagney, who's diligently studying the bass track there and this blazing sunshine. Uh, looks like Slapper's going to have a decent more day, going to remain up in there. Already two guys with over 20 pounds, or at 20 pounds right. already. The one thing that, that is interesting is, uh, let's see here, where did he go? I was looking for Koya. Oh, there he is. No? Uh, no, he wouldn't have been that far down. No, he can't. He had enough in two days to stay up pretty uh, good. Yeah. No, I, hadn't, I guess I. Right oh, there, there he is. Seventh. Seventh. Got one bass for one four. Yeah. That's very surprising. No, it's very surprising. Oh, you'd think, I mean, because he caught them by this time uh, on day one. He had 28 pounds, right? Uh, but the way I understand it, he's went through lots of fish. He does. He he just whacks on them, man. Yeah. There's Maybe a deal where he has to move around a little more, not being able to fish the same place he's been fishing for the last two days. Well, it's pretty much three areas. You know, for all of these guys. It's but like, he had been pretty much doing the majority of his damage in the mouth of Housen. Housen. Yeah. Right. Which, that's where Luke's been doing a lot of his damage, too. Right. 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 Housen, and I, I, I don't know where Slapper is. 
Uh, he's there too. He's, he's been there in the same area with uh, Fujita. So, yeah. So, yeah. which is historically one of the best creeks on the entire lake. So, well, yeah, that's I mean, not really surprising. It is somewhat surprising that there hasn't been some fish caught in other ways in that area. Right. You know, that thing is solid hydrilla. I mean, that creek has the best habitat in the entire lake. It's basically turned into a community hole because it's so good. All right. Well, let me ask you this. Is it you think people are so focused on this they're not getting in that grass? So Make sure I, to I still will be tell honest me when I'm on. One of the reasons that because I'm just hunting right now. <laughs> so you're kind of you're always room. on. I think that's is that Robert G. We're about to I roll. I think he was told that in up the here where I caught yeah. that begin yesterday. I, the reason I say it's Robert G. is because of the hairdo, and then and then his seat. He's a short feller. Uh, I did notice that several of the uh, new elites, the juniors, they're uh, a little on the close to the floor side, which because they can see the unit. There piece. you go. They don't have to have theirs on a stand. <laughs> oh, they're built closer to the floor, so it's a better fit. Well, I do. You know, because one of the things that I've, I have noticed, I mean, you know, of course, we've had a lot of conversations on forward facing and everything. But when I look at the, when I look at the standings from day one, and you take out Vegeta, and maybe one or two others, that those standings from the last time we were here, when when uh, Van Dam won, were were not terribly off from that. I mean, you know, there was a a, a Host, there is a wholesale addition of about a pound and a half, two pounds down the list, right? Uh, but I'm like, and I'm like, is it is anybody out there cranking? Is anybody out there? Not in, know? not in. So that, so that's the biggest thing with forward facing son, sonar. There's no diversity. Yeah. You know, typically we would be watching ten guys on the last day. Seven of them would be doing seven different things. Right. And basically, because this deal is so efficient. And these guys have embraced it so much. It's the reason you'll see, I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you tomorrow that everybody in the top ten will be using forward okay. facing sonar. There will be no, I could say, more traditional style of fishing, you know, in the, I don't see anyone in that group now that's not using it. You know, Justin it, Hamner is, is uh, fishing grass with a jig. Uh, he looked to me like when I watched him this morning, he was also using it. Well, uh, he probably, yeah, yeah they're, they're mixing it, it yeah. in. There's no doubt. No doubt. Uh, but, you but know, there are, he, some... you can see, you look at that white post right now if you're watching this, and you just, you think about boat positioning, but you see how he's moving that boat. I mean, when you see, you, it's hard to see that on the horizon, but when you get a target in there they're close, how quickly he got up to that. And not in a straight line, you know. I mean, and and that's really well. You know, basically, what's me. changed? No one makes a cast without seeing on the screen what to throw at. So what it basically has, none of these guys are blind fishing. And what I mean by that, throwing to a place where they're guessing a fish is, if that makes sense. Right. Even Hamner's using it to fish grass. He's casting at a clump of grass that he sees on the screen. I He's not you. throwing where he thinks it is. He's throwing where he knows it is. That's basically that's what this has done. You don't. It's the reason you see guys go for, let's call it thirty minutes, never make a cast until they see what they're looking for. And there's Palmer. He's one of those that have not has really. 20, I mean, twenty pound. I mean, that really was probably the first. Another good thing one you'll I've find it's very it physically it's not near as demanding. It is. It's kind because of you're not hard. making all those repetitive casts that you would typically. Yeah. Uh, Really you know, these guys are only throwing. Like it's just an easier on you physically to fish. These guys will be in yeah. better shape after. Can't so we're going to fish back to back. Deal of grass, you might not even see them. They won't be beat up when we leave and go to Fort, if well, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Where a guy who's fished for four days, like more traditional style of fishing, physically, he would be a little more drained. I remember. Like a lot of times you could just look. It's been the, 10 years. You know, you can see the constant and that's probably eel grass and then all of a sudden you see shoots of hydrilla or coontail coming through it and that's really all you used to have to look for you know because that's where those fish would be sitting huh. sometimes it, it doesn't <laughs> so
So basically, he just reiterated what you said. He's seeing the grass and seeing the shoot of Hydevilla coming. Yeah, he's not doing it. There's no guessing in this. Like, there's, he's not guessing where it's at. He's throwing exactly, you know, either at a fish or in the juice where the fish should be. He just said, no way, Jose. See, he's seeing the fish and throwing at it. Be real interesting if he catches one or all three. <laughs> so far, I'm betting on him to catch all threes. <laughs> he's done pretty well this week. Yeah. He's done pretty well. He did pretty well last year winning at Santee, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah at Santee. All right. And, you know, Luke was a good fisherman before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like he, it's not like he was good uh, before. And I think you'll see that yeah, with this, really that guess. the better fishermen, I don't know they were already right. capable bass school. fishermen before this technology came out that have embraced Patrick Walters, another one. Oh, yeah. Pat yeah. Chapelier, another one. All these guys were already accomplished anglers a, before the a, uh, uh, new technology. One of those. Slip knots or whatever. Yeah, I don't want to see. It's got one on it. I guess I could have held that fish out for Kyle. All right, there's Justin, and like you said, a hundred percent. If you're, if you're, hundred percent. That's not. That's not. Uh, you know the way we used to do that. You, you, you'd, you know, you would do your sections and you'd. Do your fan casting? Well, so forever we've just made educated guesses. Okay, mm -hmm. we went in, went out, and took everything that was going on, weather, water, put all those things together, and you made that cast on everything you had learned in practice or while you'd been on the lake during the tournament, and you know, there was you basically you were making educated guesses with as much education as you could take in. Well, now you don't do that. Now when you don't. So basically, what but my this is but let's stop right there because my educated get and okay, I'm and you're familiar with this. I'm at Washita, I'm at DeGray, I'm at Toledo, I'm at Raper, and I'm looking out there and I know that I have this grass in front of me. My educated gra uh, guess a lot of the times was that those fish weren't sitting on top of the grass, but they're in the grass, you know. But and at times they are right. Yeah, so I've I mean, caught one or two out of the grass. There are times of the year when they are in it. Okay. This is typically not that, that time, time of the year. Okay. No. So, I mean, so what you have noticed about this, what I've learned about watching these guys with it and the fish, forever we had that assumption that, and a lot of fish do make that, have made that move up uh, this week. Not as many that have stayed out. And that was kind of a learning experience for me because I'd never been here this early. But what a lot of those fish are doing, we always took for granted that they went in, okay, mm -hmm. when it warmed up in the spring. Right. Well, a lot of them didn't. What they're doing, they just came up. They still came up shallower. Mm -hmm. They stayed out where they were in the winter mm -hmm. and came straight up because they want to feel the heat. You know, bass is a sunfish. Right. He basically wants that. But what we were thinking the whole time, and some of them do, were making that move up towards the shoreline, shallower, on bars, getting on high spots, whatever. But a lot of these deep fish, the first thing they do before they come in is just come straight up. Well, we knew they would suspend and won't. But you couldn't, before you couldn't target that fish because you'd just be throwing randomly. Mm -hmm. You couldn't look for it. If it wasn't getting on structure or you couldn't get over it, say, with your 2D to see it, you would have to fish for a fish. So basically... If you've read Bassmaster for years, the hardest fish to catch is suspended. Spit, yeah. Well, now we've proved that all wrong. Right. What was so making it hard is because you couldn't Sweet. present the lure to it. Because you could, you didn't know where. You didn't know where. It. You could, the gar. fish could it be sitting over long. here. And you're throwing over here. I don't think it was a gar though. And so now they know exactly where they're setting at. So a suspended fish basically is as easy or easier right now to catch as a fish. That's Holding on a stump. 
Sometimes maybe easier because the fish holding on the stump looks like a stump because they're predators. They're not sitting up there waving their arms, right? They're hiding there on that stump. There is still certain situations when fish are able to hide from this technology. They either tuck way down on the bottom and sit tight. If they get really tight to something in the grass and sit on top of it or suspended in it, And a lot, one of the reasons these fish are so easy to catch, these fish have never been fished for before. They're fishing for a fish that basically, however many months of the year it lives out there, never sees a bass lure. Right. It's only caught on occasion, and when somebody would catch one before, they would think it was random. Because you randomly catch one out there, maybe fishing for some other species. Right. So now they're, it's basically like, honestly, like fishing in a private lake, because these fish don't, hadn't been seeing lures. Right. That's one of the, and these guys are so good, that's one of the reasons they're so productive at it. Mm -hmm. They found a fish that they can exploit, so they're exploiting well, man, it. Years ago, you know, as an outdoor writer, uh, we, we constantly were told uh, by the Ricky Greens and, and, and that generation of that, that we're fishing for 10% of the fish, uh, you know, because there's a bunch of fish behind us. That we ain't figured out how to get to. Yep. And, and now and we figured now that we, out. Now they figured it out. And, you know, and here's the other deal. They don't have any. They're... Was watching. Did you go to control? So I think he's asking when I can get in a question well, uh, I do over blame our you little because earbuds here. Why that... would you do the 27 degree one and not like the 80 degree, like in the, in the Florida sun, you know? Patrick's jacking with his cameraman. What's how do you tell the difference when you're looking out through there of the species? Like well, so everyone's using, you know, different brands of electronics. So some show the fish differently. But the biggest thing, regardless of what brand you're using, is how they move. Okay. A bass has a tendency to move more in a straight line, swim in a straight line. A catfish has more of a and they don't Roman. chase the lure the same. Like I heard even earlier this morning while watching live that um, I can't remember, maybe it was Stetson that was talking about when a bass is track. like a lot of times when the bass is tracking the lure, he stays on it. He'll stay right on it. You speed it up, it'll make him go faster. When you pull it around a catfish, if you don't drop it right on his head, you pull it away from him, he'll stay at the same speed. He never speeds up. Some of the brands, including mine, when they turn right, you can see the fork in their tail. If uh -huh. they So everybody's just the same in that when that fish is either facing you or facing away, it's basically a circle. Right. But, you know, with mine, I use active target. When that fish turns broadsided, about 90% of the time, if, it, if, if it's not rough, if it's not really rough, and you, like, basically the conditions they got is pretty nice, when that fish turns broadsided, there's a pretty good chance that you can see the design of the fish, how the fish is built, okay. see its fins and tail, what species it is. And that comes with time. It you got to, you, you just got to learn. And, and, you know, one of the things that I've reminded our viewers is these guys eat, sleep, and breathe this. I mean, it's not like something they're figuring out on the water. They know what about every little piece of that bass looks like uh, before they ever get on the water. And, and they have over the time just by, by studying the, the creature itself. Because even when they're sight fishing, you, you can pick up a tail yeah. or a fin or just an eyeball or just a piece of the fish. Well, and, and then how to work the lure. And I, and I right. Like, that's the other thing. This is so much like is, sight fishing for a bedding fish in that they're looking at the fish I mean, and they can like tell by the movement, like the bait choice they use. Then, whether you're using stop, one of these shad bodies, bodies or a like, jerk bait, or if you swallow. noticed, I even noticed this last year in one of the opens. It was the one at Lake of the Ozarks. The guys were catching them on a jig. It was such an untraditional way they were moving the lure because they're watching the fish's reaction, so they're paying attention to that. So I, I'm even impressed with how these guys have figured out. If you've watched this, how many of them are close to a navigational buoy? Mm -hmm. or a marker in this lake. Those fish are using those boat lanes to travel. Right. They're not using creek, creek channels. Chan well, yeah. to some extent, but most of the guys are fishing on boat lanes. I even watched guys, and while I was fishing shallow, run into a creek and shut down in the boat lane 
and go right down it because they've cut all the timber. Bass being much like other wildlife, how much does a deer love an edge? Edge. You know, so these fish are migrating and they're just using whatever edge is there to get around. I mean, road beds have been good for since the, these lakes were built. Right. So basically, they like that clean area to right. uh, to move around in. And but and but it won't cl- cover close by. Yeah. And basically, if something happened, they could tuck right in the trees. Right. Gotcha. And there's even an argument that some of these fish that live in this lake offshore never come to the bank. Right. Most of them, chances are they don't. They spawn in the timber. Maybe it's a big tree they spawn in the top of. And maybe on these lakes that are so good, maybe all the fish don't spawn. Maybe Mother Nature says, you know what? We only need a certain amount of fish right. to keep the population. There's just a lot, so much. Un- this is like National Geographic of bass fishing now with the new technology. Well, we are we are learning uh, a ton, uh, obviously, and, and there's still more to learn because I'm way behind the curve on this deal. It's like a loon's coming in. Had, had it on my in. boat. I <laughs> turn it on. Well, you'll get to the point now, honestly, and I've learned that the hard way this week. If you don't turn it on, chances are you won't be competitive. Yeah. You know, if when the conditions are right, and we just had perfect conditions here this week for this to be the dominant deal. We're just a little early enough in the year that those fish didn't make a migration to the shore, or enough of them to be competitive anyway. Right. Well, and that that was kind of kind of what I was asking earlier. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of, th- you know, there's also within that there's also this. Uh, I'm gonna fish to my strengths regardless, and and without with this being so consistent, it doesn't allow you to see what like somebody's nice out there one. with a, a, you know, a six x d or a five x d or. Uh, or with a spinner bait, which I saw Christy throwing, and jig, and that kind of thing. It doesn't. There's just somebody would figure them out. That's what the deal is, right? So one of the reasons that there was uh, such a high percentage of our group doing this this week mm-hmm. is one of the reasons that that's how most of the fish were caught. It, regardless right. of what, if if ninety percent right. of the field is doing whatever. That's how. That's going. how the majority of the fish will be caught. And so right now, our whole group. I talked to guys, and I had no idea. I, I spent my practice, you know, fishing more traditionally, because I was betting on the fish to come. And uh, but I talked to guys that I thought would be fishing, that never made a cast other than with their forward-facing sonar in practice. And you know, me being this is my 20th season, it old habits are hard to break. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like so. Well, I get what, uh, you know, but the other part of that is, is you know, I'm wondering if that, if that is a, if this new habit is too hard to break. Will we see this next week? 100%. Uh, everybody? I'll, bet, I'll bet money on, I'll bet money that <laughs> the majority of the top ten, that we will be watching their back just like we are right now. Hmm. So think about this, a tournament, we just left a tournament, we're going farther north, we got a big cold front coming next week, mm. we've got a couple warm days, the big cold front coming, if you weren't doing that, you got your teeth kicked in this week, so what's the chances of being more like, let's just say this week, 75% of our guys spent most of their practice doing that, next week, I'm going to say 90% will spend the majority of practice looking for that, because the deal is regardless of the weather, what happens those fish will be out there swimming around. Right. Well, we're going to stay here swimming around here on the bank of, of Toledo Bend and go to a break real quick, and I hope you'll stay with us and sitting here with Greg Hackney, and, and uh, maybe we'll learn some more. So stay with us, please. I joined the Bass Club in that same time frame that Toledo was being impounded and filled up, and... Uh, and my first bass club tournament was, was the Pasadena Bass Club, just south of Houston. And our, my first tournament was on Toledo Bend. And of course, you can't imagine, I, I mean, the timber that was in that lake. Nobody can unless you saw it. I mean, you literally could not see the other shoreline. 
I mean, a squirrel could literally go from Texas to Louisiana and never touch the water or ground. I mean, obviously, he'd just from tree to tree to tree. It was, it was amazing. I, I, I had a, <laughs> hate to even admit this, but my first bass boat didn't have a troll motor. But, you know, that shows you what I knew about bass fishing uh, at that point. I'll never forget that because I know how much timber is under the water even now. Tacoma, Toyota, let's go places. We believe in bass fishing, but we believe in bass catching even more. We make products for hardcore anglers. We design, build, test, and redesign until it's right. We cut our teeth on 15 pound floral and 30 pound braid. We only admit the bleeding when we get bass thumb. We're here for serious anglers. We are serious anglers because those of us that earn this badge are untouchable. We are Bass Mafia. Buy more, save more with Lowrance. Are you ready to take your fishing to the next level? Get a huge rebate of up to $4,000 when you purchase selected gear from Lowrance and a whole range of leading marine brands. Scan the on-screen code or visit Lowrance.com to level up your boat today. It's the moment when everything is on the line and precision, power, and control make all the difference. A moment over 20 years in the making, anchored on loyalty, trust, and support that goes beyond all expectations. A relentless pursuit of perfection, all born from a revolutionary idea to help you rule the water. Power Pole. One look and you'll know. These fired up next gen machines are engineered like no other. Precision tuned to excel under pressure. Vexus boats have revolutionized what quality, performance, innovation, and a true rough water ride can be. Check out the long list of advantages at vexusboats.com. After all, some things turn your head, others ignite your soul. watch them every every Sunday on ESPN. We've had our leaders trying to hang on for dear life. We've had some other anglers make a furious charge in some cases. You know, and to be able to fish the Elite Series like truly means everything to me because I've truly set my whole life up to do this. In the top 10 fishing championships, they give you all the down And I feel like now I'm there fishing against the best in the world. Got your eye on a new Yamaha outboard? Then get to your dealer now for the power and performance sales event. For a limited time, purchase a new Yamaha 30 to 450 horsepower outboard and get up to seven years of Yamaha warranty protection free. 
or earn up to $200 in dealer credit on eligible 2.5 to 25 horsepower models. With amazing offers like these, Yamaha Power and Performance has never been a better value. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches. Great taste. No compromises. Go rogue. They never struggle. Do an issue on the struggle. What they call You catch you. What's Patrick Walters? Look, see, he's got five for ten before he caught those easy. Yeah. Now he can get get with it. Get with it. Well, you thank you for joining the conversation and live mix here at Toledo Bend. And uh, sunny, wa starting to get warm, Louisiana. I'm sitting here with Greg Hackney. And uh, uh, I'm, we're looking at uh, Robert G. Uh, I can tell by the way his seat doesn't come past his belt loop. So. He's kind of got a certain lean, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. I'm not making fun of anybody that is uh, uh, challenged uh, vertically. Well, compared to you, I'm challenged vertically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you only got about a foot on me. Oh, no, that's not true. You know, you, you remind me of the no. sheriff on Robin Hood. Oh, no. I don't know why you've always reminded me of him. That's, that's cold, man. No, it's I, not. I want to so be, be Robin Hood, man. But now that you've gotten so skinny, now I don't know. I've got to pick out somebody else. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, okay. Well, I want to be Robin Hood or Batman. So, Just like uh, maybe right, really, I wouldn't mind being Robert G. right now, a rookie on the deal. He's sitting in third. He's got a decent sack, 17 pounds today. and. Uh, but Didn't yesterday we had a couple rookies in the top ten when the day ended? Uh, we had him and uh, who else was it? Because it's changed up quite a bit. Uh, oh, he's, like he's hooked up here. Oh, yeah. Is it good? Nope. Going to vote flip. I don't think he will. He might, though. According to Bash Track, he's got a 2-4. It might be a under 2-2. Two, two. Oh, that's a cheap one. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Let's see sandbagging, because I can tell you right now, they're some of the biggest sandbaggers in the world. This looks pretty fat. He does not help us. But we will see. Uh, we've got a 2-2. Two -two. We're going to put them on the beam. Not that one. His fish might be a little heavier than uh, than what he's saying. Than what he's that saying. doesn't ever happen. Hey. Last track? Yeah. You guys are just so honest. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's his smallest. So what do you? He's got a decision. Whichever one looks the best. The Whichever freshest. one is Put the that fresh one in there. So you're, you're saying that fish there is two pounds, two ounces? I'm going to say that fish is two eight. Yeah. I, I mean, thought it was about a two and a half pounder, just guessing. I, I didn't see it close. That's why I'm using this Boat Logic toll beam. Oh, okay. It'll tell you. Oh, we sell it. It'll he's tell you sell. the right one, the coal. And that's for sure. Them scales, when it gets to so light, those little ounces, you don't want to mess with that. So you got a coal beam them. I'm trying to get every ounce I can. Huh. All right. Don't even put that one in. Where's it didn't he really from? help but like an ounce. 
<laughs> He's still sandbagging on live. Starting to see a little bit more. Uh, trying to trying to find me a big one. I don't know where he's from. I'm not seeing very many. Here's here might be one though. Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, yesterday, you know, Patrick Walters I had a guy out covering Patrick out there with Turn steel right camera. He texted me. Patrick just caught a pig in eight pound. And then he caught another one. And, you know, and I'm looking at his scales, and he puts one in as a four and a half, and the other one is a five. Then he comes in there with his bass track, and he's got 20 pounds and weighs 30. That was a cat, Daddy. A lot of catfish in this lake. Look at my line. It's got all that goo on it. <laughs> That's just because he was happy to see you. Is he catching this catfish? Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay. I guess we won't be eating catfish tonight. No, no catfish. None. So there's a there's a lot of lot of big crappie in this lake too, dude. I've been seeing some of them. That was the thing. We're gonna go see Stetson right now, and uh, Stetson was part of our Washtaw event last week but i didn't uh, see that yeah and i was out on washtown following paul marks hit hook set the hook catch a two pound large mouth drop back in there set the hook catch a seven pound striper drop back in there set the hook catch a two pound crappie i mean i'm like dang son i didn't remember this little old spot right here come over here and if he had caught a walleye he would have had the quad effect you know I think Washita showed out. I, it, it, I, I knew it was good. It could before. have been better it than could, that. But I mean, they had a big cold front. Had, right. had some really bad conditions, but there was almost a ten pounder caught every day. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, no doubt. You know, the big bass at Washita is as good as it was at Toledo so far. Uh, better, better, because it was ten fourteen. There you go. And then there was almost a ten caught the second day. Nine. Yeah. Heavy nine, like a nine fourteen. Score, I saw yeah, one. I don't see it now. Yeah, we'll be surely we'll be going back there at some point in time. It, it was a little bit of sun, and I mean, you know, what most people didn't realize is like three weeks before that we had a week of single digit temperature. Half the places those boys fish actually had ice on it. Uh, that, that's not common. Very unusual. It's not, but Washita is always. It's a good wintertime lake. Right. Always the thing of it is, early. is it, it fish is so big. It fish is so big. It, you you hardly ever saw any boats gathered up there, especially c compared to like Okeechobee, where you know Scott Martin won with seventy boats around him. You know, uh, following Jeremiah Kendi, hardly ever saw a boat. Right. You know, another. Watching a guy from that area. That area has turned out lots of great bass fishermen in its time, yeah, it including Stetson. Yeah, Mark Davis, George Cocker, Mike Worm, Kevin Short, the Murray brothers. Murray brothers, oh lord. <laughs> the list goes on. Oh my gosh, yeah, let's just keep going. Ricky Green. Ricky Green. Ron Shuffield. Ron Shuffield. Ryan Shuffield. David Ashcraft, Johnny Routon, a bunch oh of people gosh, that they're yeah. like, because I, I had the opportunity to fish against a lot of those guys yeah, growing yeah. up. So that area is. Well, see, and that was one I was talking about with the fish, because this would be the time of the year right now that David Ashcraft would be throwing that big wiggle wart in that grass. And I fished with him. He was a team partner of mine. <clears throat> and you could tell when you're fishing that medium depth type thing how that fish hit that bait. And it seemed to me like all those fish, we were ticking the top of that grass, and all those fish would hit that bait to where it would come in, and you could know that they hit it from below. You know, they either, they were catching it from behind, that's a different look. Catching it down on it, that's a different look, but coming up on it. Uh, and that's why I was like, man, I'm not sure I could ever seen those fish. Well, but evidently you can. Maybe yeah. they see them. They drop down and they come. Oh, oh well, a little Jordan Lee action. Yeah. Little JoJo. 
So the biggest difference between that style of fishing and this is these guys are catching a lot more numbers. So that more traditional style of fishing or what we grew up with doing, you have days where you catch 30, but those days are special. Special. And, uh, you know, most of the days when you had a big day, you caught, let's just say you got nine nine bites all day from throwing that plug Mm -hmm. from daylight till, you know, whenever the, the day was over. And, uh, you know, that's the biggest difference. It's what it goes back to what I'm saying is not physically as demanding because how many casts would you make with that big wiggle wart from the time you started to the end of the day? That's the reason these guys, you watch, they don't fish that much. Right. You, they're so efficient. They're catching three times as many fish. But the far as the action of casting right. and doing that, they're not doing that. And another thing that I thought, and this is all going to come out as time goes on with this, is that even if a guy was up there good fishing, does that guy physically slow down some by day four and let these guys who are basically haven't physically put out as much exertion, they outfish him on the last day. Right. So these are all things that are we're going to see right. now as we go forward with this. There's so, just so much unknown with it. Well, one of the things that I had started to talk about earlier is 10 years ago there was a nutritionist guy that used to travel remember the guy that yeah, was, i do remember and uh, they put a calorie counter on air mark and and basically during an eight hour day air martins would burn 5,000 calories that's right and and uh, my my wife who is a nutritionist and, and a uh, at the time, personal trainer and all that, she's like, that's impossible. Until she started watching all the activity that these guys are doing. And you burn that mu- uh, amount of calories in a day, you're wore out. I mean, it's a, it's a workout. At the end of the day, it's it, you are complete. And I find that what it's adrenaline that keeps you going. And as soon as you weigh in or as soon as you check in, you have a huge adrenaline dump instantly yeah and that's when i would be tired and the next morning you get keyed up again adrenaline would basically right. take you through the week right so this is just totally different from what we're used to mm-hmm. we're used to seeing whatever so it I, again i've even thought about that i'm like eat can a guy even compete normally fishing with this just because it's so physically demanding can he hold up you know right and the deal is you would say, well, the younger guys will be able to. Well, the younger guys are going to be doing this, 100%. Right. Right. You know. Well, you remember in the mid-90s to the 2000s, how many guys had basically tennis elbow, uh, having those elbow, you know, That's Browning, right. Nixon. Uh, uh, a lot of folks used to have that. I mean, Larry's been operated on all oh, over his body. All over. And just beat up. Here's our leader, Pat Schlopper, Slapper. But I still. will even say this: our qui- our ca- our rods and reels are better now. Right. And now everything is made for a certain technique, specific. Right. And the equipment boats are so much better. So they're not beat up. These boats are so you know, I mean, I, it's like standing in your house all day fishing. Right. Our boats are so nice. We were telling a lot of stories the other night, Davy Hyatt, and. Especially back in the day, we had those 17 foot footers with 150 horsepower motor, and that was about as big as he got. And those guys were making 80 and 90 mile boat rides in those little boats. In those little boats, and three and four and five footers, and uh, you know, we cancel those days now with bigger boats, bigger engines. But you know, it's probably for the best. Come on, Pat. Tell us what you're seeing. Is, is Pat still sitting on about 18? I think so. Let me see. Uh, get back over here. Oh, gotta go. Let's see. You know, I'll be honest with you about Pat. Pat's been kind of a silent killer. Oh like, yeah. Like you, you know, I from mean, not just this year, but from the from his get go, from just when he started in the elites. He's a, and he's, he's another one of those guys that even before the this technology, he was already a standout. Right. There he is. He 
You got him? No. So Pat has, yeah, he's got 17, 12. And he does weigh his fish. He's been pretty accurate. As a matter of fact, he's the first angler of 2024, and I'm not sure there were any anglers in 2023 that won a dollar off of me in the weigh-in line because I, I totally missed his deal. He had a fish yesterday that weighed eight pounds, six ounces. And I'm just going to tell you, that thing must have been totally starving because that fish was big, bigger than eight, eight, six, visually. But I should have lost a dollar on it. I just thought it was I've seen a couple probably. of those this week, and uh, I, th I think the deal is when, when those fish age, you'll have that. Yeah. They seem to not the younger fish seem to have the are healthier well he had a, he had a close to an eight pounder in the bag and it was like that fish was two pounds bigger looking at it right one yeah. of those tiny live in that ocean yeah just you know you've heard a big bone hollow boned i guess that kind of thing it's crazy it goes back to you know how much of our world is in water yeah and how much of it is unexplored well that's yeah. kind of what's going on right now Right. We're exploring part of it that's never been explored before. I don't like it when they don't show up as heavy as they look. <laughs> There's been a lot of big fish caught this week. I know. That was one of the things that Clun said earlier, at, uh, and I'm not sure if you said it while we were on the show or uh, offline, that uh, you know, Harold Allen uh, was a, is a guy on this lake, and, and he had talked to Harold last night, and Harold said, just blown away by the amount of fish that these guys are catching. Uh, yeah, it's so surprising when he has a slow day. It really is. I, I mean, you expect, I'll be honest with you, I expected him to go out there this morning and have already caught. Look at there. Yeah, just needed to talk him into it. All we had to do was say something. Oh, Mr. Oh. Looks yeah. like the That's the first real reaction that I think I've ever seen him make. I've covered him. Yeah, That's so a good one. Yeah. Good size. Yeah, I think yeah. he'll weigh that one in this afternoon. Yeah. No doubt. Well, he's only got two right now. Well, I, I have credit. I, I'm, I'm going to have to give him credit. I think he's you think he'll have I think he'll be cooling before yeah. the day. I do. <sighs> we were talking about, Ooh. and I think. Uh, yeah. Yes. That's a good looking four pounder. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm going to say it's a little more than that. Yes, hold. He's an interesting scale. See if he changes it. No. I thought he was going to tell us how many grams it weighed when I saw that scale. Yes. He's such an interesting guy. He's the coolest guy out there. He doesn't get, like I said, when he that fish came up, that was the first reaction I've ever really seen out of him. I've covered him a lot. He's just very laid back. Maybe when you don't have, you're not catching them every cast, maybe it makes them a little more exciting. Yeah. Well, even when, when I've seen him catch them, he's just like, okay, this is, I mean, dude, that fish right there, you know, I, he says four, I'm going to say closer to five. I'm with you. And he's, on, he's on, got a spinning rod. Anybody else is going to be, they're going to be, you know, doing this. He, uh, he, he jerked him right in. Uh, he's, he undally, I watched him, yes, some footage from yesterday, and uh, he undally is using pretty big line. He's he's not using five or six pound tests. You can't pull on them like that, you know. Right. Like he horses them right on up there, and the one that I saw yesterday was a, a great big one. Yeah. And uh, he did the exact did same, the same thing. thing, forced it up there and got it right in the boat. Okay. Yeah, there's no playing around. I'm not yeah, going to so give this fish any chance. So that, that would make me think that he's like, I, I, I don't know what pound test he's using, but it's not four or five. Something on fire over there. <laughs> Somebody didn't. Fired up the smoker. Yeah, getting smoke ready for it. it's gonna be party time here in just a little bit. I think Wayne Toots is playing here today. <laughs> I'm good. I love. I oh, love it'll a good be smoke. a good time. I, 
You know, that's one thing about having an event anywhere in this part of the country. You know it's going to turn into a party. It's going to turn into a party. There's going to be f cooking, a little bit of drinking, and that's conservative. Yeah, that's conservative. And uh, Beers flow in this country, much like yeah. the water does down the Sabine River. Yeah. <laughs> but I do like, I do, I, I he's, he's, uh, Coy is just interesting to me. And, you know, he, he doesn't care. He's like happy go. He doesn't care but about what? Ain't nothing. You've had that conversation with him? No, I don't understand the exactly. conversation. Exactly. So maybe. But I mean, you, you, I'm just out there following <laughs> I, him. I, I, I was mean, fixing to be totally impressed if you knew Japanese. <laughs> I don't. Growing up in Arkansas and you speak, he's fluent. Uh, all he's fluent I can, in Japanese. All I can do is order off a sushi menu. So that's it. And I have Sago. I'm not, yeah, Jackie. they have Dragon Roll on there. I'm not sure that that counts. <laughs> I, okay, you got me there, but I still, I still love Japanese food. I do too. It's my favorite. As a matter of fact, that's the only thing I have against Manny, Louisiana. There's not a good sushi bar here. There's one here, but I might be a little bit scared of the fish they use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I want to go to Japan more than anything is to eat. So, who are we still on coil? Yeah, still on court. But he is, I mean, you know, he'll sit down. I've seen him sit down, catch a four or five pounder, get in the boat just like a turkey man, get him in, sits down, reties everything. He's not in a hurry. It's no, there's no, it's just taking his time. He'll look in this box and he'll do this thing and everything. Then he'll get back up and catch another one. I mean, you know. Well, he's very confident in what he does. There's no doubt. I mean, if you watch him, he's like a machine. A machine. I think he's going to wind up, and I heard him talk a few times today, and his English is pretty good. You know? He can say big one. I heard him say that yesterday yeah. on camera. Big one, big one. But he's, uh, I think he's going to wind up teaching us a little bit. He's very secretive, though. Let's see, who is this? You recognize? I, I don't know. I can't. Either. I don't know that. I can't see the boat. Marshall sitting down. Uh, a reddish boat. I couldn't even tell if it was wrapped. I couldn't either. It might not have been. You know, I'm sure there's a local tournament going on. That may hurt him. You know what I'm saying? Local tournament. He may hurt his own self. He he catches a lot. He is so efficient. And he catches so many fish. He's there to catch them. Isn't he? I, I felt like oh, he has a pretty good understanding. That he's seen that when he's catching them like that. He's seen the numbers. Like you know what I mean. Now the one thing about that whole deal that does look like to me, these fish move around a lot. You know, so he might just have to expand out. They move. I mean, we. I feel sure he understands that. That I'm you sure. know how they move. So you know now he's on day six. Basically, so he's been out there for six days watching these fish. Mm -hmm. So he's seen them through a lot of different weather. So uh, I feel like before the day 